top of the top. What's up? What's the word? We back. Well, that's how we do. We back. Hold up. You mute that. We back. So look. I had to go back to seven. It's six o'clock. I think that was too early, y'all. I think a lot of people couldn't deal with that six. Plus, you know, the people from Cali, and they had to get up real early. So I had to bring it back to seven. All right. Yeah, we 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 had seven. Seven is official time. I was trying to see if six was gonna work, but I ain't gonna lie, it was kind of hard on me too, because I had to get up like four o'clock. But we had six o'clock. I mean, pardon me, we had seven o'clock now. Right? That, that's the time, seven o'clock. Y'all know how I do. Over than that, how y'all feeling today? What's up, Sharon? Good to see you this morning. What's up, Sharon? What's up, Tiger? What's up, Faith? What's up, y'all? How's everybody doing this morning? What's up, Melanie's? Trap Medic, what up? What up, life? Yeah, we here, y'all. Episode 561. I'm putting nails, I'm putting a nail in the coffin today, y'all. Everybody on this channel already know I've been telling you that hip hop is dead, rap game over. Well, I'm gonna start saying rap game over instead of saying hip hop is dead, all right? Because it is true, hip hop will never die. It's just that what we once knew is not, is not no more. This is all I was trying to tell people, man. We the world is changing. The world have always been changing. It's just that every time the world changed, we always miss the boat. We always miss the flight. So I was trying to, in my mind, in my opinion, I was just trying to tell people how I live my life. <laughs> everything I said on this internet basically is how I live my life. So my whole thing is everything I say is my opinion. Not to make nobody believe me, not to make nobody follow me or convince nobody. And that's people's problem. See, people think everything is a fucking debate. They think everything is, uh, that's what I'm telling y'all, man. But I'm going to prove today. And a lot of grown men, I'm going to hurt their feelings today. A lot of grown men are going to get put to bed. I'm talking about a lot of grown men. Grown men that live in a fucking fantasy world. And they didn't want to believe. They ain't want to hear that shit. The same way when niggas be little, they don't want their mother and time to tell them real shit, then they want to hear it. They ain't want to hear it. They ain't want to hear it. Was no such thing as Santa Claus, man. I'm gonna keep using the same references because that's how I look at it. A nigga that believe in a rapper is the same nigga that believe in a in fucking Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy, the same shit. I right? I'm gonna tell. I gotta show y'all cartoon characters, Disney characters, costume motherfuckers. That's what rappers are. All right, it's entertainment. And it became our culture. So now I'm going to show you how you live the culture of dumbness. Because you have been dumbed down. And now that the genre of hip-hop rap is dead, now you're going to see a lot of people lost and they're not going to know what to do. Because they're going to feel like a part of their life is taken away from them. But that's my opinion. I'm just letting y'all pull up. Anyway, shout out to everybody, man. And like I say. I got a lot of love for my people, but I'm telling y'all straight up, like I told y'all from day one, I do this for the youth, man. I do this for the people that don't know no better. They never knew the truth and might not never find the truth. So that's why I do what I do and say how I say it. I don't care about nothing else. You know why? I live my life already. Most of y'all already lived your life. Y'all living your life now. That's why I was trying to tell y'all it's not about older people. Not that not older people. But I'm trying to tell y'all, man, this old mentality is why we've been dying. The old mentality is why we're not getting nowhere. So that's why I label old mentalities as old heads. Because you are as you think. You think old, so you are old. You are old head. So a lot of old heads, they love fucking rap. And they don't want to get it through their fucking head. Meaning, they get all worked up. They get mad. They want to get it. They want to debate. I'm just telling y'all, man, this shit over with. And you're going to see... The old heads are more entwined with shit than the young heads. And that's the problem, what I'm trying to say. That is the problem. We put all our energy into rap, streets, and bogus shit, and all of the real shit, we ignored it. See, we didn't have the same energy for everything. The real shit, we just brushed it off. That's all I'm saying, y'all. We got our priorities mixed up. But guess what? I'm not here to be the dead horse. Everything I'm saying is old. It's already done. I'm already living my life. I'm just trying to tell the truth for those who don't know. That is it. All right. So let's just get into it. Three Six Mafia rapper producer Juicy J tells the truth. Rap game over. Also, 
We're going to talk about the fall. Big YouTuber, Omni and the Hellcat. His possessions are being auctioned off by the feds on the 13th. And he was a big YouTuber. So I just got to show y'all what I already told you already. That this is the year a lot of people going to fall. And it ain't going to stop. And when you see a big, big YouTuber, a real big YouTuber, not a fake big YouTuber, a big YouTuber lose it all, that should let you know right there. And I've been telling people before this shit happened that anybody banking on, 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 on YouTube money, you, your day is going to be numbered. It's just the truth. They go for me, everybody. Shit ain't about nothing. It's just a couple dollars, all right? Meaning you cannot build your life off of something that is not real. It's not sustainable forever. Why? Because you didn't create it. That's why. All right, we all on we all on borrowed time, man. All of us. So anyway, man, we about to get into it. Shout out to the replay game, man. Hit the subscribe button, but I'm about to stop saying that anyway, cause they, it, they ain't about nothing either. Let's go, man. Shout out to my people that's up in here, man. We're gonna start off with Juicy J because as of what I'm seeing right now, Juicy J is the only rapper. That I seen speak out to tell the truth. But first of all, let me clarify Juicy J is not just a rapper, he is a top producer. All right. We also know 36 Mafia, one of the biggest groups. We know they won Oscars. We know Gangsta Boo just recently died. They the ones responsible for Gangsta Boo. And everybody knows, especially from the South, all around the world, everybody know they beats, nothing to mess with. As far as hip hop wise, they are the founders of the sound that you hear. You know what I'm saying? As far as that crunk shit. Then they went in the trap, but that's all 36 Mafia for those who know that. Matter of fact, offset new song right now, Jealous is a 36 Mafia sample. So Juicy J getting paid off that right now. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it go when you're a producer. Juicy J is a producer, he is not just a rapper. So my point is what he's saying is valid because he gets publishing checks, ASCAP. You know, he's a producer. So he's not just talking as no little ass rapper. He's a producer and a CEO. Period. Juicy J, DJ Paul, they are CEOs producers slash rappers so my point is they know the game in and out all right that's just the truth so when juicy j spoke about how hip-hop is now falling and he is saying that it's time to call a meeting of the minds he's trying to basically saying the people that got power it's time to come together and try to figure out how they gonna stop this rap thing from crashing because juicy j have already admitted he knows the truth that the future generations or the future coming up right now in rap or the rappers right now are going to be broke in a little while longer because the game is drying up and he understands the industry is crashing the game. So everything I've already been telling y'all today, I'm going to verify it. That's it. And it's not for no clout, y'all. It's not for no personal gain. I have to stress certain things because people have been lied to for so long. You've been lied to and you've been living in a backwards world for so long and people just been kept coming pouring on more lies and more lies and that's what's been going on so everything you believe a lot of that shit is lies it's called fake reality man i'm just the one to try to get you back on track that's it that's it so look like i say man they're not juicy j ain't just no regular dude talking so i'm just giving a a, a format to show you that he, he's not just talking out his ass so we got to look at this. That's why all. That's why I put things on the screen so you see it for yourself. Man, I don't like to just talk. Juicy J speaks on rap music sales being down 40%. Now, remember, sales. We're not talking about listening. We're not talking about streaming. We're not talking about YouTube views. Because, see, we got caught up in the world of views, numbers. I told you, numbers lie. Just because people got a lot of views and subs, that don't mean money. We got trapped in a world... Or a lot of people did, but they kept thinking numbers mean success, likes mean success, <laughs> fame means success, but it don't. It's all about the numbers at the end of the day when everything get added up, and when people, when the smart people start deciding what makes sense and what don't make sense. So when we see hip hop down forty percent, we know something ain't making no sense. If you're an investor and you're in the making money, how to make money if the sales are crashing? That's almost 50% sales down for my people that know about economics. All right? It's called going bad. It's called time to sell a company, time to cash out. So look, now you see why I drain them and cashing out? Now you see why Lil Wayne been cashing out? I already broke all this shit down to y'all. Whenever you see a cash out, that means something falling. Man, I ain't got time for that shit. 
know why I say this, y'all. No disrespect, man. But see, it's always a dumb nigga, an ignorant nigga. Always got some shit to say, but don't know what the fuck they talking about. That's why I don't fucking like niggas. Because they run their fucking mouth. And they ain't going to do shit. They just going to talk. But they don't know shit. They ain't going to learn shit. And that's why they going to keep falling. And now we in a time of fall. I told y'all that. Ain't no coming up. We in a fall. If you ain't already up, your ass going to fall. It's that simple. If you're not already up, if you didn't already take the proper steps, your ass going to fall this fall and the winter. You going to freeze. I bet you that. Now let's look. Let's go back to this. The change in the landscape of rap music has found the rise of many artists who are different from the generation of rap before them. While there have been many artists who saw success in the last few years, Juicy J reflected on a statistic noting rap music sales are down 40% in 2023. The Three Six Mafia producer then asked rappers, producers, engineers, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Set out his own mouth. What are we going to do? This shit crashing. You hear me now? You hear it now? He said, what are we going to do? And mind you, Juicy J rich. He's rich. He's great. He don't got to rap no more at all. He don't got to do shit. He'll co he going to collect music. For he going to collect money off his royalties forever. Oh, Gangsta Boo and the rest of the whole Three Six Mafia. Sipping on Scissor. Them, they got hits going back 20, over 20 years. So he ain't got to rap do nothing no more. He's straight. But my point is, his love for rap music, he letting it be known. Look, y'all, they taking the culture down, man. This shit dying. What are we going to do? See that? Look. Three Six Mafia producer then asked rappers, producers, engineers, what are we going to do? He then laid out how rappers actually make money off of rap and that people should take the news seriously. He basically is saying that, bro, a lot of y'all got to feed y'all kids off this music. But when this shit dry up, what y'all going to do? He talking about all the new rappers and the rappers in between. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He's talking to all the rappers that are not established like him. Get it? A lot of rappers are established. They're going to weather the storm. We, we spoke about that. The rest of them ain't not. It's that simple. If you don't have a fucking catalog of at least five gold salt gold hits, or you ain't got a couple platinum hits in your catalog, and you don't get radio spins every day, them niggas ain't getting no money. They don't, they're only good as their next show. Anyway, along with that, Juicy J called for a meeting of the minds in the music industry, saying they should discuss the next steps to correct the downward trend. Told you, man, that man calling for a meeting, man, state of emergency. But guess what, Juicy J? Them niggas worry about a hip-hop museum, bro. The old heads, they worry about a hip-hop museum. They don't care about no young kids and rap dying out because them niggas can't rap no more anyway. All the niggas that been irrelevant, that been fucking out of here, all they worry about is getting accolades and getting their name recognized. But they ain't never going to get no fucking money. And they don't care about no youth, all right? Because old head, all he wants is an accolade and some fucking shine. That's it. So all you get them niggas. And that's why the mayor, Eric Adams of New York, got all the old heads to come to City Hall to praise a hip-hop museum. Meanwhile, New York is fucking crumbling and the rap game crumbled first. They crashed the rap game first. Now they're crashing the people. That's simple because it goes together. They told you hip-hop was your culture, right? So if I kill hip-hop, motherfucker, I done killed your culture too. I done killed y'all. I ain't got shit to do. Get it? All you ever knew was trying to rap. All you ever knew was trying to be a rapper. All you ever knew was trying to get out the fucking ghetto. So if I kill your dreams, I kill them verses, I kill them songs, I kill y'all spirit with it. Now what you going to do? That's my point. It's a program, man. Now let's get into this shit. Why well, I told y'all fucking. This is the man that told you hip hop is dead, but now I'm going to tell you the rap game dead. But at the same time, I rock with Nas, but at the same time, he a hypocrite too. I already showed you Nas with Little Nas X, the outright gay boy that rap, all right? Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's what he want to do. But I'm just trying to show you. The same nigga that told you hip-hop is dead, the same nigga that's still trying to survive. But he ain't trying to resuscitate it. He's trying to fit in. Do you see Nas looking like 21 Savage? Do you see Nas trying to adapt to the new world, to the new ways of rap? Do you see him? What part you don't understand? That ain't the same Nas. You want to hear the real Nas? You got to listen to Illmatic, Stillmatic. Get it? I am... That shit now is not, that's some bullshit. All these niggas been trying to do is save their ass and survive, man. You see that? My real hip-hop heads. What you gonna say about Nas? Because I'm tired of y'all too. Y'all wanna keep talking about shit, but you skip over shit. Nas is a great man. He was great. That's why I kept telling y'all, man. The real hip-hop is already recorded. 
Nas is not going to drop no new hip hop. It's never going to sound the same. It's never going to be the same. You're never going to feel the same. And the beats ain't going to be the same. Premier ain't doing the beats. Nigga, get that shit through your fucking head. It's done. All right. All these niggas are doing are trying to get their money grabs. What's my point? Why Nas and Jay Z and Diddy and the powers that be didn't sit down and say, you know what? We need to save hip hop, man. This shit is not right. Why all the founders of New York City that started the rap game ain't saying, look, y'all, we need to come together and we need to save this stuff, man. The culture dying. No, you know why? Because out of 50 years anniversary, the 50 year anniversary, a lot of rappers are now 50 years old. So now being that they 50, a lot of them just trying to get paid now. And being that they 50, they don't care about no young heads. And they don't really care about what rap is no more because they old heads now. You get it? Nah, it's worried about child support and shit like that. But he's straight. He good. But I just want to show y'all how Nas also been playing the game very, very wise. He been trying to play the game too. You see him looking like, do you see him look like he kind of took 21 Savage swag? When 21 Savage came out, he came out just like that with the Cartier shades on. Just like Nas look right now. But niggas ain't going to say nothing though. That man stole 21 Savage swag, if you want to be honest. Same fade, same beard, same mustache. Come on, man. Stop playing with me, man. Niggas ain't going to trick me. But I know the game, all right? I told y'all, man, I'm not a clown. Just because somebody's from my hood, I don't care if you're from my building, nigga. If you're a fucking clown-ass nigga, you a clown. I don't care if you live my, if you my fucking next-door neighbor. But you, some of y'all, y'all co-sign people just because of where they from. I don't do all that lame shit because I know it's real people everywhere and it's lames everywhere. And sometimes you got real people that just do lame shit. So what if I'm a real nigga? If I do some lame-ass shit, you want to say fame, man. That was some lame shit you did, bro. Straight up, that's how I get down. I ain't like y'all. So anyway, 21 Savage says Nas is not relevant. He just has a loyal fan base. Now, is he lying? And, I, and, and when 21 Savage said that, he made a lot of people mad. But I understand what he was saying. You see, what he basically saying is the old heads stopped putting in work. They stopped being the bosses, meaning they, they wanted to control shit, but they wasn't making no, 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 no good music. They didn't make no good music in over 10 years. I'm talking about real music. I ain't talking about the songs you like. I'm talking about certified bangers. You know what I'm talking about. A certified banger, a certified banger rap song is when anybody hear that shit, they're gonna say, either they're gonna say who that, or they're gonna look, or they're gonna try to say, or oh, either the hook gonna catch on the beat, something. They have not made music like that in over 10 years, man. Really longer than that. But the point is, a lot of people felt that was disrespect when he said that. But this was also showing you it was a chain of events where rap got the way it got. They dumbed it down. Y'all know that they dumb first. No, first of all, uh Jay-Z, Diddy and them sold rap out to the South. Once the South and everybody else got it, they, they had their way with it. All right, they did whatever the fuck they wanted to do, and that was that. And while the South had it, a lot of people had hard times. You know, when it was going all over the place, Southwest, wherever the fuck it was going at, niggas was having a hard time. And niggas complaining about mumble rap and the rap game is this. And they was fucking complaining. And then what happened? Soon the streaming came out. They said, oh, streaming? What's that? You mean I can get paid off my old catalogs? And I can go back on tour? And it was like, cool. And then they stopped bitching. That's all that happened. That's all happened, y'all. I'm not a nigga that got tricked by the internet. I never forgot shit. Once the old heads realized, I can get paid off streaming? Really? They started getting back. Oh, shit. Let's go. Started selling their rights to title. James started, niggas started trying to get back on tour, do shows. They was thirsty again, but they was before they was crying. But the point is, this was a chain of events, man. Why rap is fucking dead. It's a chain of events. Okay. A nigga the other day, like I said, nigga got mad. Cause like I said, man, niggas be on that tribal shit. That's another reason why we failed. Niggas be on that tribal shit. Divide and conquer is another one way why niggas always gonna die. And I'm saying a lot of things I'm saying today. This is what I want y'all to understand about me, man. I don't really care about shit. And I don't really care about nobody. I'm telling you the truth. I only care about who I care about. So what I mean by that is, I'm not saying what I'm saying today for nothing, but to let it be known. That's it. That all of the ways that people been living by is the same formula or the same program is why everybody's going to fail and fall. Meaning, this so-called lifestyle and this culture that most people have been living since they was a child 
is the same reason why people are grown and have a child mentality, but not just a child mentality because we all got a little kid in us, but this child mentality has become a permanent handicap to the point where people now do not understand reality and when to let shit go, when to let shit die, when to leave shit alone. So that's why we watching all the shit we watching and that's why all this stuff is going down. You see what I'm saying? And if you feel any way about rap in your heart, it just shows that you're still a child and you're still not where you're supposed to be at. And that's why my whole purpose is to fucking shit on people today. Let's go, man. I ain't got time for this shit. Let's go. Now check it out. What genre of music sells the most? Despite rap's dominance on streaming platforms. I gotta stress this. Streaming is what keeps rap relevant. You know what that is? Yeah, let me break it down again. Y'all should know this, but y'all gotta pardon me. I got 10 to 100 different people listening of different rate. You know what I'm saying? Background. My point is, man, I know I got smart people. I know I got idiots. I know I got people that think fast on their feet. I know people that take time to register shit. It's okay. We all here together. But I have to break down certain things for those who can get it all around the board. You feel me? So that's why I got to repeat certain things. But let's get back to it. All right. Now, my point is this streaming is why rap is relevant. Why? Because we like to listen to songs, right? But we also know most songs are short. I broke all this shit down. Rap songs are short on purpose because the motherfuckers cannot rap for one, for two, meaning when you can't rap, for those who don't know about rap and writing rhymes and all that shit, when you can't rap, do you know how hard it is to write three verses in a, in a hook? A lot of these rappers can't make three hooks. They can't make three verses. From what I always learned, hip hop was a formula of 16 bars, hooks, get it? But it's not like that. Now it's rap, rap, rap real quick. Somebody else rap real quick, song over. Why? The shorter the song, the more you gotta listen to it. The higher the streams. But that's magic, that's tricks. That's not record sales, fool. That's what I kept telling people. The internet, yeah, he got a million views, but I could have listened to this shit a hundred times myself. If I, <laughs> you get it? So if, if I like the song and you got a certain amount of people that like the song and they keep listening to it because it's only two and a half minutes, of course the streams going to go up. So rap music has been still popular because of streams. Why? We like to stream rap music and we listen to it. We play it over and over, whatever, whatever, whatever. But when it comes to buying that shit and buying merch and buying tickets, that's a whole nother topic. We don't do all that. That's what other people do. So my point is rap has still been dominant as far as culture and sound the hottest sound but financially and and uh marketing wise it's not popping now look rock continues to be the biggest genre for album sales now you see why they bringing albums back out see they bringing albums back out because they about to go back to albums why because they can go back to making money it's not like back in the day you know why they stopped making records because we was recording them on tape and selling them shit like that that's why you're going to see everything within the music industry that we was doing to get paid they shut it down that's why if you get caught selling cds that's federal now see you can't sell cds no more what they actually did was they had to figure out a way how to decode the music in the internet so that we could not bootleg it no more so when they first came with that program of that sound scan program you know how if you playing music like if i'm playing music in my background right now the computer gonna pick it up when they came with that technology i already knew it was time i knew shit was over meaning that bootlegging shit all that shit was dead and you gotta remember that's how rap survived through bootlegging i'm talking about real hip-hop so they started putting little laws in effect around hip-hop where they didn't want us making copies no more. So now that everything is digital, now they're going back to records because now they don't got to worry about you bootlegging. They're going back to physical copies, CDs. You can't bootleg the shit no more. So now it's going back to physical copies. Now they're also going to be able to start getting more money. And they're also selling records and CDs again, and they're going to be doing bundle packages where you buy a rapper album. Now you might, you know, they're going to have a package deal. You know, they got it out now. They've been trying it, but it's, it's going to go back to that where they got the deal where you buy the CD, you might get a T-shirt. You feel me? So they gonna they they gonna be doing bundles with physical copies. The digital shit, as I peep now, was to throw a lot of people off. They needed the digital game to help crash rap. You know what it's called? Spotify. Uh, no, all those rappers that were streaming. Remember all those rappers coming out of nowhere? This rapper come out. This rap, Trippy Red, Six Nine, Blueface. That was part of them crashing it. 
they were oversaturating it on purpose. When you oversaturate something, that's how you destroy it. Key point. If I'm the weed man on my block and I'm getting all the money and I'm the only nigga with the bud, I get all the money. I'm the nigga, right? But what happened? Now, mind you, I don't built my neighborhood up. My block make $5,000 a day of weed. Fuck it. I got it jugging. But what happened? Now, my next door neighbors, they start seeing what I'm doing. They want to do what I'm doing. Next thing you know, I got seven more neighbors on my block want to hustle. But the whole time, they tapping into my flow. It's oversaturated now. What happened? Being that I got seven neighbors trying to sell the same thing I'm selling, I'm not going to make the same money I used to make because these niggas taking my money. Oversaturation. But well, that's what they did to the rap game. They oversaturated the shit. And so many motherfuckers was rapping and putting out trash, one hit wonders. They was crashing that shit. Get it? It was too much shit. Meaning, it was so many rappers coming now, you couldn't keep up with one. Get it? Microwave shit. Futures, future the hottest rapper. Hurry up and throw out 50 new futures. That's what they was doing. Clones. It was oversaturating shit on purpose. When you oversaturate shit, that's how you crash the market. Because like I just said, if I was only do selling weed on my block and now everybody's selling weed, guess what? Ain't none of us making no money no more because we all got the same shit. I got to go somewhere else. Get it? Crash the genre. Crash the block. This is called economics. They crashed the shit to destroy it. They've been crashing the shit when they first dumbed it down. So look, as you see, streaming platforms kept rap alive. But rock, rock and roll continues to be the biggest genre for album sales, accounting for 35% of all albums sold. So at a, at a 100% of all music, remember, that's Latin, pop, all that, gospel. You got to look at all the music, 100%. 35% goes to rock. So rock and roll holds down a third of all record sales around the globe. So that means rock and roll still pop. And that means rap does not sell like rock and roll. Rap is not a third of records sold. At one point, rap might have been the top album sold, period. Now let's look. Hip hop merchandising industry was worth $74 billion in 2020. See how hip hop means money? You see why they told you hip hop is your culture? Because your culture is really spending money. Black culture means spend money. Did you know that? The whole science of black culture is spend money. Anyway, hip hop merchandising industry was worth $74 billion in 2020. Forbes top and earning hip hop acts collectively made nearly $300 million in 2020. A Nielsen study showed that in 2017, 31% of radio listeners preferred hip hop. 23% of worldwide music album sales came from hip hop. That was in 2020. So as, as you see, it started to drop. 31% of listeners, that's us. We like to listen to it, but we're talking about merchandising. All right? So don't get me wrong. Hip-hop still was doing its thing. And there's certain people that kept it going. You know who helped make those numbers, to be honest with you? Kanye West, Travis Scott. It's people like that that kept them numbers up with their merch because a lot of rappers do heavy with merch. Get it? Anyway, we'll get back to that. Also, Drake got something to do with that too. Anyway, let's, let's go. Is hip hop dying? 2023. Billboard. They are the ones who certify the gold, the plat album, the platinum albums. They the ones who give certification out. Billboard. A lot of y'all already know that. Billboard published an article about why no rap album or song has topped its charts in 2023. The reason are the lack of hip hop stars who release albums. Let's stop right there, man. First of all, did y'all know that? No rap album has topped the charts in 2023. That is blasphemy, y'all. Hip-hop have always topped the charts. Not one have topped the charts this year. It's fucking October. Ten months, not one. And it ain't gonna be no more. I told you that. It ain't gonna be one. I told y'all this shit, man. So now you see why they say that. Because the reasons are the lack of hip-hop stars. What that mean? That mean all these rappers are fucking bogus. They made up shit. They factory motherfucking plants. They just grab a motherfucker when they see him and just say, come on, you rap, come on. Do you? Did y'all see how fast they replaced Glorilla with Sexy Red? Remember Glorilla was just popping a little while ago, trending her ass off? Do y'all remember that? Remember how Glorilla was hot? What happened? Didn't Cardi B get next to her? I told you they've been doing the same formula. They wait for artists to get hot. And then the artist that's already hot, go get down with them to keep themselves irrelevant. And they've been doing this shit for a long time. But you will see, you name one, Cardi B, I don't give up. You will see none of them put out complete 
finished products of albums that are bangers. And my point is that is the formula to keep hip hop going. So I already knew why they started all these rappers beefing that kept them distracted from making hits and collaborating. You get it? Keeping the culture alive. I said it on this channel. I said, don't you think if Nicki Minaj and Cardi B would have dropped the album together, that shit wouldn't have rocked the internet, would have rocked the world? Because it's about hip hop, fool. They would have did it for hip hop. And it would have gave hip hop something. But you got to look at all of the beefs. You got to, that's why I say it started from when New York started beefing with each other. That was the start of killing New York hip hop. That was the, that was the start of killing hip hop, period. All right. Once we get the founders to bang on each other, what you think going to happen? Simple. Simple. But it just took 20 years to, to, to collapse, y'all. It took 20 years. My opinion. Now, look, there's no stars because we in a microwave era. So it ain't no real stars. That's why I said, y'all, these are internet people. You've been getting tricked by internet shenanigans, internet success. They're not real stars, man. A real star is the, the stars are the one that sustains the genre. Pop will always be pop because pop have about 100 stars under this umbrella. Rock and roll always going to sell because you have over 100 rock and roll stars still around. Do you get it? Hip hop don't have no stars. Nas is not a star no more. He's humble. He just be chilling. Get it? That's why I said the last hip hop star on paper in America is Little Baby. But we know he's not a real star. Get it? Anyway, man, it's the stars that keep the genre popping. It's the stars that generate the bag for that culture, for that particular genre. So when Billboard told us that no rap album or song has topped this charts, that really meant hip hop rap does not have a king to sustain the kingdom of hip hop. Get it? That's what that meant. Hip hop got dethroned. That's why the music does whatever it wants. It's the same thing with the streets. Then we had to sit there talking on the streets, bro. They say, look, man, the young boys, they don't want to listen no more, man. They don't want to listen to the OG. They just do what they want to do. Well, they did the same thing in the rap game. The little niggas just doing what they wanted to do, and they fucked it up. Now, you see why the hood fucked up the streets? Because the little niggas just did whatever they want to do, and they fucked it up. So that's why Juicy J is saying, look, the OGs, the, the minds of the game got to come together we got to figure this shit out because the game about to be dead. It's over with. And he's saying, basically, I'm straight, but if we don't get this shit together, the future generations going to all be broke. All the rappers that came out, whether they made a hit or not, going to all be fucking broke in a minute. And I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to the proof of why. Don't get it twisted. I'm going to show you all everything. So just let's look. Now, let's look at this, man. We're talking big business today, man. Salute to everybody in here, man. I see y'all. What's up, Diary? What's up, Sassy? Ty 105. What up? Let me get back to the work. Now, look, the streaming era did two things for hip hop. First, it reduced the gatekeeper's ability to control the music supply. See, that's a very important thing because streaming did two things. It oversaturated the rap game. I just said it. You had now we got streaming, so anybody can drop a rap. All of us can drop a rap song today because of streaming. That's what helped oversaturate it. But the good side of streaming was you didn't need none of these clowns, the gatekeepers. I told you these are the gatekeepers. The part y'all didn't understand. Don't forget Swiss Beats, too. He wanted them, too. These are all the fools you had to go through in New York to be successful. Y'all didn't figure it out yet. I've been telling y'all this shit. That's why I kept trying to tell my people, man, it's bigger than New York. I'm New York. Well, if you're from New York, you New York. But what you don't understand is a lot of people in New York that signed up with their New York government and city in the city of New York to play New York politic games. And they've been doing this shit for years. City Hall is tied in with the industry of New York. They all work together. What y'all don't understand? The Giants, the Knicks, the, they all with the police. It's all it's, it's one program, all right? New York City is the entertainment capital of the world as far as communication entertain you get what i'm talking about broadcast systems but those broadcast systems are under the thumb of the police the government the states dummy the polit the politicians that's what i was trying to tell you so when you brought big in new york you got to play politic games i don't care if you play for the giants you got to play politic games the small hat people y'all i need my people to wake up 
See, we've been repping New York, but we know the truth now. The truth is, y'all, we we from New York, but we know we don't run the shit. We know the small hat people run the shit, man. We gotta wake up now. So everything that niggas been doing been under the thumb of the small hat people. That are these people, the gatekeepers. The gatekeepers work for the small hats. The small hats, the police, the government, they're all the same. That's why they job was to make it so nobody from New York City make it unless you go through them. That's why I kept telling y'all to make it. You got you had to lead them niggas because they work for the people. Their job was to always keep New Yorkers sleeping in a frenzy, in a fairy tale. Why they the ones that move out of town and live everywhere else and do all the best and fly on G4s and niggas be in the hood going through shit, trying to be like them, killing each other and trying to shine. My point is this, man, you're going to see it's strategic. Certain people made it out. Certain people never did. And you'll see every last one of these niggas had a record label and you ask a question and don't be fucking stupid and don't play like you don't fucking know. What happened to every rapper that was signed to each one of these niggas label? Where the fuck they at now? And I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait because I want them niggas rebuttal. I love rebuttal, but y'all just like the rebuttal shit when the video over with and run your fucking mouth in the comment section. I need somebody to say some shit right now. Which one of these New York niggas put on another New York man to be rich like them? And I'm going to fucking wait. Y'all going to make me break this fucking computer today. You tell me because I don't want to hear shit about that shit after today. You tell me. I'm waiting. I'm going to fucking wait. I might wait 10 minutes. You tell me which one of these niggas. Okay, he's from Chicago, Kanye. Which Chicago man did he make rich? You, wh Who the 50 make rich from New York? You, any one of these clowns who they make rich. I'm talking about where they straight right now. And I don't, don't tell me no Memphis bleak. All I know is they had a chance to break a lot of talent. A lot of brothers had dreams. A lot of brothers was fucking with them niggas and had hopes. And ended up with shit. And they all of these niggas are part of the reason why the game is crashed right now. Fuck you talking about. What you talking about? They don't want to have no meeting to save hip hop. These niggas, these are the niggas that been trying to save their own ass. These are all the niggas been going for self. As soon as DMS get back with Swiss Beats, he fucking dead. We in the crib in the pandemic. They started up versus Swiss Beats and Timberland. Let's get paid off them niggas in the crib. Monetize that Instagram page. Had all, had all, the, all the rap idiots on, 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 on Instagram watching verses while them niggas getting rich. Why? Because you love hip hop. And they don't give you shit. Nothing. And they're the ones that crashed the game, y'all. It's them. I'm showing you the truth. You don't want to, you don't got to believe it. Because like I said, I'm shitting on some of y'all because these y'all heroes. You dumb motherfucker. You, you was following these niggas your whole life. Dumb motherfucker. Dumb ass nigga. You still dumb. I know a lot of you niggas feel a certain way right now. Look at your, look at your fucking fake ass uncles. Look at your fake ass make believe daddies and homeboys. You dumb ass niggas. You still ain't get it through your head. You still ain't ready to be a family man, nigga. You still ain't ready to get your life in order. Cause guess what? Every last one of these niggas got their life in order. Same way I told y'all with Beyonce. You can follow Beyonce all day. She gonna tell you be a single lady. She got a husband and kids. She gonna tell. Yeah, Beyonce gonna entertain a rainbow family all day to get her fucking money. But at the end of the day, she got a husband and kids. So they gonna always tell you what the fuck to do, but they kids in private school, your kids, goddamn it, got a struggle. But you worry, but you love these niggas. What the fuck you love these niggas for? That's why a lot of you niggas are zesty, because you love men too much. And when I say shit like that, I'm hurting niggas' feelings. I hurt your heart, don't I, nigga? Because you a sucker, that's why. You don't want to admit the truth. The young boys already know. The youth already know the truth. They know the truth. That's why I ain't got to play with none of y'all. I'm The youth already feel me. They already know what's up. Streaming rapid growth phase got a boost from the short-lived album bundle phase. For a lot of y'all know, a little while ago, they tried to do that bundle package. DJ Khaled tried that shit, and we know DJ Khaled, is, he don't even fucking rap. He is a, a Arabic man that got rich off rap. DJ Khaled, a nigga that came and rap. He was nothing but a, a, a Arab that said, you know what? I can make some money off these dudes. I got the money. All I got to do is start putting out albums and make these niggas rap. DJ Khaled, we the best. Boom. Rich. Ain't, ain't bust not one verse. <laughs> anyway, and how did DJ Khaled do Ace Hood? The, the, black, the black man that helped him build that whole shit up. Shitted on him, didn't he? Yes, he did. Now look. Album bundles were a way to encourage the sale of physical copies. Billboard and by extension, the major record labels devalue streams since they require at least 1250 streams to equal one album sold. Do y'all see that? 
Now do y'all see how they've been cheating? Now do a lot of you idiots see how you've been getting finessed with fucking sales and thinking niggas bigger than what they are because of social media numbers, because a dickhead named Jay-Z told you numbers don't lie and you stupid ass believe the shit because you a fucking dummy. Any nigga believe that shit, I bet you nigga you ain't really hustle for real. You ain't make no fucking money. A lot of you niggas ain't never been nothing but fans. A lot of you niggas ain't been nothing but in one hood your whole life and you don't know shit. The point is, look, they've been saying that Listen, let's we're gonna look at this shit one more time. They were saying that a thousand and two hundred fifty streams is an album sale. That's bogus. Meaning, we know an album sale is when somebody go buy that shit physical. Just because somebody listed ain't an album sale, but my point is this: it's a trick because listening to something and buying it is two different things. When a fan bought your album, that meant they really fuck with you. But just because somebody's streaming your shit, it don't really mean much. It just could have been a lot of people checking your shit out. See what it sounds like. You feel me? Like with this channel. If people going to tap in, see what I'm talking about? But they don't fuck with me like that. They're going to come in and out. But the people that fuck with me going to fuck with me. They're going to buy the album. Get it? That's why I say y'all know the truth. I'm not for fame. I don't get gassed up by fans. I don't call people. Look, man. I'm going to say it again. Because a lot of new people came on this shit since I've been cooking. Everything that niggas been trying to get, I already got it. I didn't come in for that. I'm not rich. I'm not poor. I'm not nothing. I the shit ain't about me. But I had to try to tell people that all of this fake ass shit is why we in the situation we in right now. What situation we in? We got we on our own, all right? We on our own. The country is crumbling and we not getting no help. That's my point. So I'm just showing you the chain of events. Why are we where we at? Where we at? And I'm showing you how everybody went for self. Now look, Kanye West is a producer. Sean Puffy Combs is a producer, allegedly. Jay Z, Fifty Cent. These are producers, CEOs. But like I told y'all, they were working for the white man all that time. They were just the middleman for the white man. That's it. Meaning they didn't just work for the white man. They actually did what the white man told them to do. They didn't fucking create nothing on their own. The fuck is y'all talking about? But the point of the matter is, all of them know the truth. I just showed you dumb motherfuckers Diddy just went to New York and politic with the mayor. He just went and sat down with the mayor individually while the city is being sold out right now. The city is crumbling and Diddy didn't say shit to nobody. He went and talked to the mayor. He got an update and went about his business. I showed you the week after that motherfucking Jay-Z pulled up to the same location, hollered at the same mayor. What's going on? They tapping into the New York City politics to see what the fuck going on. They checking in with the city, the state, not the people. So I got to keep telling you dumb motherfuckers. Because a lot of y'all old, but you fucking dumb. You don't know shit but rap, rap, and YouTube. You don't know nothing. These two rich niggas, billionaires, the same ones that sold New York out, came back to politics with the mayor and checked the current status of the migrants. Long story short, they all know what's going on. They also know what's going on with rap crashing. All right. So my point is, how the fuck does Juicy J is how how the fuck is he the only one speaking out? He no different from them, meaning they're CEOs just like him. They know the ins and outs just like him. They all in the same umbrella. You get what I'm saying? So why is he the only one saying we need to say hip hop? We need to have these meetings. But he's saying it not for him. He is saying it for the future of rappers. They're going to be broke. Every single rapper that drops the album that don't have major hits is going to be suffering in the future. And every other rap artist and anybody that thought about being a rapper, the game is about to die. And Juicy J saying, what the fuck we going to do? But you'll see the rest of them. They not saying shit because they don't give a fuck. That nigga with the camel face, long as his wife and his daughter pimping out on stage, get money. That nigga don't care. That nigga been stopped rapping. Anyway, man, let's move on, man. Let's go. Let me show you the shit, man. The real story behind hip hop's decline. All right, niggas thought I was making shit up. <laughs> to be clear, hip hop is still the most listened to genre of music by far. Keyword: It is a top genre listened to. Listen to and generating revenue is two different things. What they really saying is hip hop is listened to a lot. But it's mainly listened to a lot by people that don't buy shit. 
That's really what they're saying. The same way a lot of people got YouTube channels, you got a lot of fucking subscribers, but you don't get no fucking donations. You don't get no memberships, but you got a lot of subs, nigga. You got a lot of subs. You got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100,000 subs, but your channel don't make the money it's supposed to make because most of your people just there for bullshit and they're not going to buy shit. What I told you, fools. I said, nigga, they're not buying those T-shirts you selling. I said they're not buying those cups because you know why? I wasn't trying to be funny, y'all. I was just trying to tell people, look, man, bro, that merch you selling, you know goddamn well niggas in the hood don't drink coffee. And you know goddamn well niggas in the hood ain't buying no hip-hop mug. You know this shit. And we also know that. Let's be real. Let's be real. I don't got to play, y'all. I don't got to kiss ass. I know for a fact, man. Man, some people only going to support you as much as they feel like it. Niggas ain't going to support you. I know this. That's why I don't get my host worked up. All right? If you depend on a nigga to help you, you're going to fail. If you depend on a nigga to help you sustain, you're going to die. It's that simple. Why? Because some people are selective. That's why I always try to give thanks and praise to my real subscribers and supporters because those are the ones I put on for. You know what I'm saying? I don't worry about everybody else because every what they say a fan they're gonna blow like the wind a fan gonna go here and there they're gonna be everywhere that's what fans do they fanatics they never get enough a fan gonna be a fan i'm not into fans all right so my point is this it's a reason why shit is the way it is because supporting and listening is two different things a lot of y'all fucking listen to me every day but you don't support me and guess what? That's cool. I'm all right with that. So, like I said, man, now if I was on this shit to make money, I'd be mad at all y'all. I'd be like, man, fuck y'all. Straight up. <laughs> but I ain't with all that. You feel me? I'm just telling y'all the truth, man. So, look. Hip-hop always was top listening to. We know for a fact hip-hop was getting robbed back in the days with all the bootleg CDs. And then it got robbed when streaming came out. Napster. We was making our own CDs, right? Well, hip-hop then was getting their money taken to taken from but the thing is hip-hop always been the number one listen to genre not always the top money maker recently recently hip-hop has not been making the top dollar and look check it out according to luminate is 26.8 share of u.s recorded music consumption the next closest genre is rap i mean rock so rap and rock always have been rotating and i also broke down on this channel how they infuse rock and roll with rap years ago they did the experiment at the same exact time when they had kanye west and 50 compete i'm always give y'all the key song party like a rock star party like a rock star that was the first song that was publicly promoted to blend hip-hop and rock and roll swag together you get it they packaged it together to see how it was going to do and then you'll see after that song you started seeing a lot of rappers started leaning towards that rock side. That's what I broke down the punk rock with the with the colors in the hair and, the t and certain looks of rock and roll stars. Chains hanging off their pants. The tight pants at the bottom. Pay, uh, plain t-shirts. You get it? Graphic t-shirts. That's white boy stuff. All right? Straight up. That whole rock culture white boy stuff, it been got infused in the hip hop, man. That's what I was telling people. Anyway, let's go. The streaming era did two things for hip hop. It kept the gatekeepers out and sales were no longer limited by what the label expected. Meaning before you might, you had to go through hell to get a record deal. You had to, you know, you had to appeal to the label. They had to be filling you. Then they might want to give you a production deal. And then you sign, you might be signed for three years for your shit come out. You might be signed three, four years. Your shit never come out. Streaming dead at that. You could just drop it like it's hot. Fuck the game. I just drop what I want to drop. But at the same time, it was oversaturating the game. Now, let me get into what I was talking about. Another dirty game they played with hip-hop, y'all, where they started labeling other people that are not even hip-hoppers, they started calling them rappers. Remember how Nicki Minaj was bitching about how she didn't get an award? And how, like, like how, you notice that, right? They might get an award to certain people, not to that person, because they play word games. Pop, rap, rock. They was playing, they played games with the categories and they played games with the names, singer, rapper. But I'm gonna show you something. What counts as hip hop? Here's what I wrote in the 2022 culture report. Bad Bunny, see I've been talking about Bad Bunny. This person right here is covering Bad Bunny. He's the top, is, top one of the top motherfuckers on the planet, period. Bad Bunny calls himself a rapper. See that? 
That's the problem, y'all. That's what I was trying to tell y'all. Remember when I told y'all a while ago, I said, yo, man, rap is on a world scale now. I said, they're not making rap music for the hood no more. I said, they're making world music. That's what I was talking about. I'm always going to say shit, but I might not show you the proof to about six months or a year later, man. But I like to do that, so I like when people doubt me that I can prove them wrong. They're making world music. When Drake dropped his album before this one, he dropped world music. Beyonce Renaissance tour is world music. World music is music made for everybody. Put it like this. Let me give you an example, y'all. World music is the music played when you go in the supermarket. It's the music played in the elevator. World music can be played at any event on TV, a commercial, a Super Bowl. Get it? That's called world music, y'all. It can be played in Puerto Rico, and it's going to get the same effect as in Africa. That's world music. You get it? They've been focusing on world music. They're not focusing on making music just for the hood no more, meaning they're not focused on making music for so-called black people no more. Latinos, the hood, get it? Anybody that deals with that hood frequency, y'all know what I'm talking about. Slang talking, pants sagging, braids down your back, hair down your back, goddamn lashes, gold teeth, gold chains, whatever the fuck you want to say. Car on rams, bends, foreign, anybody living on street hood type of shit, all right? They're not marketing towards that no more. It is marketed towards the good people now, all right? People with nine to fives, all right? Shit like that. Millennials. Rainbow community. I'm just giving you examples. Foreigners that can't speak English. It's for other people now. It's not for you no more. The last way we get in is this sexy red little baby dumb shit. They saying that's for you niggas. The last thing you niggas going to get is sexy red and the baby. Get it? That's the game they're playing. They're giving us false stars. Meanwhile, the real stars are dominating the genre and dominating the charts, dominating the money and the accolades. You get it? This is why I was telling y'all with Lizzo, Lizzo been killing the game because she had the rainbow community under her arm. And Beyonce has been trying to take over the gay market. Everybody around the world knows the gay market is the biggest market on the planet. Bad Bunny is an outright gay individual. So I'm trying to tell y'all, man. Bad Bunny calls himself a rapper. But he couldn't call himself a rapper unless Young Thug did it first. Get it? Unless you you didn't ex, you accepted Lil Uzi Vert as a rapper, remember? So that's why Bad Bunny can say, I'm a rapper too. Get it? Because you accepted, you let them dictate who a rapper was. When everybody let certain people be rappers, they say, okay, well, shit, anybody can do it now. That's how it started. Get it? So you can't be mad at... You can't be mad at Bad Bunny for calling himself a rapper. Why? Because you let Takashi 69 call himself a rapper. Get it? You can't be mad at Bad Bunny. You can't be mad at Burner Boy because he rap in Nigeria. Why? Motherfucker, you just let Young Thug be a rapper. You let the lowest of the low be rappers, huh? So who are you Americans to complain who's a rapper, who's not? Y'all just let everybody else be rappers that couldn't fucking rap. Get it? That's the dirty game they played. So they were putting out trash on purpose to see if we was going to accept it. And once we accepted the trash, they said, okay, it's time to take this show on the road. We can let anybody be a rapper now. And they can't say nothing. Get it? Why? Wow, we let them be rappers. We gave them money. We gave them deals. We let them shine. But they do kill each other, started beefing. They ain't do shit anyway. So now we're going to take it and give it somewhere else. All right? So look, if hip-hop's global impact were categorized appropriately, no one would talk about a decline. Latin music is one of the fastest growing regions in the world. And most of that revenue is generated by artists who like Bad Bunny. Get it? Artists like Bad Bunny is getting all the money, man. I told y'all that. When I kept telling y'all hip-hop was dead, I was already studying this shit. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all, man. I was studying the shit, and I knew what was going on. It was being set up where these rappers wasn't going to make no more money like that. Meaning, this is what I keep trying to tell black people, man. I, I, I don't mean to say it like that. When I talk about how we on different times, you know, they got them. The world is on one time. They had us on another time. Our people are always going to make money, y'all. But they're never going to get money on the level of other people. It's always going to be an in-between. You feel me? They're not going to never give Nas the money they would give Bad Bunny. That's my point. So Nas make money, but he's never going to get paid like Bad Bunny. That's my point. You get it? I'm sorry I got to keep dumbing shit down for dumb people, man. Sorry, y'all, because I get, I get flat. I get backlash. I get slick comments. Get it? 
to the part of me, y'all. My family already know what's up, man. This ain't for y'all. Y'all already know this shit. It's for everybody else that don't get it. So, like it's like, 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 like we see right here. Latin music is one of the fastest growing regions in the world, and most of the revenue is generated by artists like Bad Bunny who consider themselves hip hop. You get it? That's why hip hop is dead. Because Bad Bunny is the top rapper in the world now. They have switched on what a rapper is and what is hip hop. The real hip hop has been killed and buried at the Grammys and is going to be stashed in the hip hop museum. Do I have to say it again? It's fucking dead. All right. Financially, according to the labels, the industry, Hollywood, the government, they're not cutting no big checks for rappers no more. This is even more important given the impacts of globalization. What is that? We're talking about world music, global, new world order shit. The new order music will be made for the world now. That's the new order. We're not just making music for the hood, the ghetto, the streets, keeping it real. Those days are over with. We on, we making this shit for the globe now, everybody. Everybody get a piece. Everybody can get a part. Everybody could be a part of hip hop now. Screw which I made in New York. Screw that shit. It's for everybody now. What you gonna do about it? Well, that's what they're saying. Uh, that's what they already said. But my point is, it was these niggas that helped sell it out. So I'm trying to tell these dummies, <laughs> these niggas know that. Let's use our brain, y'all. Can, can we use our? Can we use common sense now, y'all? Can we get out our feelings? Now let's think about it. Let's say I was one of them and I helped build it and I helped get paid off this rap shit. I'm let's just say I'm one of them. I done made my fucking money. Nigga, I'm a billion up. 100 million up plus. I don't even rap no more. Nigga, I'm nigga, I'm, nigga, I'm 53. Fuck you talking about. Did I give a fuck if niggas sell hip hop off? I don't give a fuck. I got my money already. Matter of fact, when they sell it, that's gonna have more foreigners into the shit anyway. So if they sell it and now the whole Latin world is in the hip hop, the whole China world is in the hip hop, and every world across overseas is in the hip hop, guess what they're going to do? They're going to stream on my old shit anyway. So I don't give a fuck if y'all sell that shit. Now you see why they don't give a fuck? They don't give a fuck. Because they're already in stone. They got their hit set up. Jay-Z know he's going to stream forever. His music going to stream. When he die, he's going to always get paid. Same thing with Diddy. Same thing with Kanye. Same thing with 50. They gonna always get paid, so they don't give a fuck if hip hop got sold out. That's my point. They don't give a fuck because even though hip hop sold out, it's gonna still help them move their old catalog. Get it? And these individuals you see on stage, they will all always be able to go on tour to the day they die. So they don't give a fuck about hip hop getting sold. Do you get it? Same way I told y'all. This is what I want y'all to watch for. Please watch out for this. Now you see how. Diddy went in politic with the mayor of New York. You see Jay-Z went and did it. Don't forget, Jay-Z is the one that sold you that lie that he was the owner of the Nets. He did. He only owned less than 1%. Jay-Z is also the one I charge with selling out the black community, selling out Bad Style, selling out Clinton, all that shit. He part of that sellout because the white man couldn't have pulled it off unless his face was on it. You get it? So my point is this. I bet you Jay-Z did he going to headline at the Barclays soon. Within the next year or two, I bet you they're going to be the first to headline at that Barclays. My point is this. They're going to headline at that shit to reestablish New York City under their umbrella. Far as financial wise. They're going to be the first to get dibs off their new money. When those immigrants that's in the town right now that you see fucked up, you thinking they all fucked up, when they all get on their feet and they all walk around the city with a pride and ego because they got their little money, they're going to be the ones going to these shows. They're going to be the ones buying these tickets. They know this already, y'all. That's what they're waiting for. People are waiting for the cash out when the new migrants in America become the new Americans, man. That is what everybody's stalling out for. So the key thing is, we're not focused on the black community no more. We know most of them going to jail. Most of them going to die. Most of them finished. The drug game over with. They all, everybody on this stage know exactly what got them where they at. Diddy, you made it where you at off drug money, nigga. 
It was the drug niggas. It was the streets supported you niggas. It was the streets that bought Sean John, nigga. It was no motherfucking working niggas buying Sean John. It was niggas getting crack money, getting dope money buying that shit. Broke niggas ain't had the money to go buy no Sean John leather. You saying they were Rockaway. It was drug dealers buying all that shit. Get it? All of them made money off drug money. But my point is, they all know that the drug game is dead. So therefore, they need other markets. That's why they're getting other markets, gay, whatever. Get it? It was drug money that made them all where they at. And that's why they all had to sell the streets dreams of being rich drug dealers. See, Jay-Z taught you to be a rich drug dealer. Puffy told you, okay, when you make it to be a big rich drug dealer, I'm going to show you how you live as a rich drug dealer, nigga. You pop bottles, you pour them out, nigga. And then 50 told you how to be a gangster, nigga. You get rich or die trying. Get it? They fucking cartoon characters, all right? Simple and plain. Let's continue on, man. While you do, while you discuss on who real and who who's the realest, you you figure that shit out. So look, as you see, hip hop is now global. It's not about the hood no more. When people this now this is something I've been talking about on this channel. This is my proof. When people discuss classic hip hop albums, I rarely hear them mention an album released in the past five years. Pop. What I say, I say half of this music ain't gonna sustain the times. It's not classic music. A lot of y'all piss me off because I'm now I'm talking about the people that fucking know better. Y'all fucking know what a hit record is. You fucking know a classic album started from the intro. You know from that motherfucking intro if that album was fire because it had a certain introduction. And it, it went through the whole album from front to back. Now we know we'll skip certain songs we ain't fuck with. And one thing we know about a classic album, let my real hip hoppers stand up for this. We know a real hip hop album. We don't give a fuck about the radio songs. We know that. We also know the radio songs have nothing to do with that album being a hit. Let's stop playing. Because we know what, y'all? We listen to that hip hop album from front to back and we skip the radio songs, don't we? Yes, we do. But we also know a real hip hop album is fire from front to back. Or majority of the songs are fire. And it, we know before when the hip-hop song came out, what happened, y'all? At least five of the motherfuckers, or at least four, gonna make it to the radio and have a video. That's a real album. So how the hell did y'all get tricked with what a hot album was? That was it. The industry was playing games with us. They was using a, they was using the fucking bitch-ass internet to lie to people and say, this rapper's the hottest thing smoking. Did you hear about this dude rapper so-and-so? And you like, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Let me listen. Let me listen. Stream, stream, stream. And that's how you made them pop. We made niggas pop recently with the dumbass internet, man. One hit wonders. Nobodies. They still run around to this day. Blueface. Takashi 69. Lil Dirt. Get it? Internet shit, man. I got back to this yesterday. I meant to show you this yesterday. You might have pull it back up. Remember I was showing you Napoleon punk ass next to Fat Joe? That claim Tupac went one Keefy D in jail. I told you he's a rapping ass costume nigga too. Now you see how he was with the outlaws. And like I said, I'm actually again, Napoleon. What, what's that situation when Gaddafi got killed in Jersey? They said it was your homeboy that killed him. They said your homeboy and Gaddafi allegedly were playing with guns in the crib and Gaddafi got killed. Even though he was the only witness in the Tupac murder. And according to rumors, Napoleon, they saying you the one lying Gaddafi up. But that's alleged. But you're gonna see. Now look at let's look at Loon. Look how Loon was a rapper with Puffy. He thought he was the next Diddy. Girl, you need a friend. All this bullshit. My point is this: he's a Muslim now. All I'm showing you is how they throw in costumes. But see, one thing you're gonna see, they're gonna be Muslims when it's convenient. But every chance they get to be around the rap game and be rappers again, they're gonna be rappers. Because rappers are nothing but niggas that switch up costumes and swags. See them with Fat Joe. Does Fat Joe not go to the White House? Told y'all they all government. A lot of them all government, man. With the government, man. Loon was overseas. He could have been a spy overseas. We don't know what the fuck he was doing, bro. That's all they are, man. Nothing more, nothing less. This hip hop now, how you like it? Plus, I've heard from more than enough managers. Now, key thing, this same article. What article are we talking about? The real story behind hip hop's decline. And you will see. This was published this summer while niggas was asleep, July 6th. But after I was already talking about this shit, I missed the article too. But look, 
Now look, like we said, there's no such thing as a classic album no more. That's part of hip hop's death. No more classic album. How how is it going to sustain? For one, it don't have no king no more. Meaning, it is nobody topping the charts. They're not producing no classic albums. That alone shows you it's dead. So now our households are dead. Our life is dead. Everything is dead. Now look. We don't hear about classic albums no more because they don't exist. But plus, I've heard, this individual said they have heard from more than enough managers that the budgets are lower than ever. And artists are expected to do more with less money because y'all they ain't getting no fucking money. They was they giving them crumbs and giving them a fucking internet sensation. Let me break this down again, y'all. For those who don't know, my people that are smart already know this. Money is not the same no more. When y'all gonna get that through your head? A thousand dollars is not a thousand dollars no more. A thousand dollars is. Let me see. I'm gonna be honest. I say a thousand dollars is like six fifty, six seventy five, six eight. About something like six hundred a change, something like that. It's not a thousand dollars no more. The value of does gas cost the same as when you got five dollars and you try to put that shit in your tank? Is that the same five dollars in your tank? No, that shit is barely a gallon. Before you can get two gallons or five dollars, maybe three. Get it? Five dollars ain't five dollars no more, y'all. Go to the store. And try to buy a 20 ounce soda. Go buy a soda, period. Watch how much a soda costs you. About two and change. What does that mean? Money ain't the same no more. So when they say a million dollars, they just got a million dollars. Dog, a million dollars ain't a million dollars no more. A million dollars? Well, you might was in my head, I always hear he just got 650000 And he got to pay taxes on that. It's not the same money. So that's why I say they've been playing money games, internet games with people. When you see Jay Z is a billionaire, he's not. That's not really a billion dollars. That's not the same billion. The, the, look, the billion dollars Jay Z and Puffy got now is not the same billion dollars Bill Gates made twenty years ago. Get it? I'm talking about my smart people already know this shit. But see, this is what I love, right? It's the smart people that don't do a lot of talking. It's the dumb motherfuckers that love to do the most talking. Feel said, and that's my point, man. I, I sorry, smart people for always got to dumb down. I'm sorry, man. But I'm just showing you that. We all know money ain't the same no more, and it don't mean the same no more. They changed the definition on $50. That $50 bill is not $50 no more. Get it? Just, just put in your mind that $50 bill is really a $20 bill now. That $20 bill is really a $5 bill. That's how you got to look at this shit. That's how I look at it. It ain't the same. All right? So let's move on. This is key right here. This is a very key important thing. This is also what I knew as a blueprint why one day hip-hop was going to die. Because why? In the early 1980s, a lot of black music was in decline. Did y'all forget? Disco was over. Did y'all remember when we wasn't born, a lot of us, but my point is, it was a time when disco was the biggest genre. Remember, disco was before rap. Another thing, don't forget, a lot of people don't want to admit this. I cracked the code on this shit, too. Remember they killed disco in 1980s? Disco was the music for anything goes. Disco was a world music at the time. Disco was the number one played music at Studio 54. When people went to the village in Manhattan, the party scene, disco was the number one rap, the number one music. My point is, when they killed disco, they created hip hop. And then disco went and turned into hip hop. Do I got to prove it to you? Let me prove it to you real quick. For my hip hop heads. What did hip hoppers start rapping on? Break beats, right? The break beats rappers were rapping on come from what albums? I'm going to wait. Hip hop started from disco. Cool Hurt was playing the break beats from disco music. Africa Bambata was playing the beat from disco music. When they killed disco, they evolved it into hip hop. So I'm trying to tell y'all, man, niggas ain't smart as they think they are. I might be smarter than a nigga from the Bronx. I might be smarter with this hip hop shit than a nigga that was born on the same street as hip hop, nigga. That's how much I live this shit. I don't play with this hip hop shit. I just play dumb. Hip hop started from disco. The beats, the music, 
started from disco. And I just told you, disco was a zesty genre where they got coked out. It was about fucking and wilding out. Because there was no such thing as hip hop. So when they created hip hop, they took a lot of the elements from disco and put it in hip hop. Get it? That's why you don't believe me. When hip hop first was established, it was played at the same places disco was. My real hip hopers know what I'm talking about. And on this one, you could be up to 60 years old. You know what I'm talking about. I got degrees in this shit, man. I got degrees in hip hop in the streets, man. I told y'all this shit. I got fucking doctors in this shit. It's real, real talk. I don't need nobody to give me no fucking degree. I got degrees in this shit. I study this shit. I live it. So look, Billboard, Rolling Stone, top white labels telling you this shit. But it's not just that they white labels. These are the people that created this thing we call the industry. Rolling Stone, Billboard was running this shit before hip hop was even breathed in the air. So that's why I always go to the foundation of this shit to get the real truth. Hip hop's charts dominance is slipping this year. Just three of the 25 most consumed rap albums in 2023 came out this year. Chart data shows. Only three of the 25 most consumed albums <laughs> did anything on the charts. They didn't top the charts. They just was on the charts. Just three. Get it? Can you now, uh, can you now see that hip-hop is dead? far as the industry is done with it. That's all I'm saying, y'all. Can you now see that? The industry done with rap? No more money? No more budgets? No big deals? None of that shit. Can you now see that for yourself? The rappers that already got a name are going to still make their little coins. But as far as the industry cutting a check because you a rapper cut you $30 million, $20 million deal, oh, we just cut them. The, oh, we just found a new cash money record label. Yo, did you hear that new label? It's like five of them niggas. All them niggas got skills. Yeah, they the hottest thing smoking. You ain't never gonna hear that shit no more. Get it? Thank you very much, Shay. Yeah, Juicy J been talking about mental health. He got a book too? Yeah, see, I gotta get that. A lot of successful millionaires have been releasing books lately trying to give us the game, man. Le yesterday, LeBron James' homeboy, he pushing his book. And he explained how he had, when he met LeBron James, he already had a house. He already had his shit together. When he got around LeBron, he knew LeBron for shit. And LeBron respected him for that. And LeBron made him his right-hand man. And his man, Rich Paul, wrote a book and said, look, man, I'm giving this to the people. I'm giving you free game, man, how to make it. A lot of rich people are giving the game back. But you got to understand, rich people only give you the game back in the book. That's why I kept telling y'all, man, everything is going back to the foundation. That's why I salute my smart people. Everything is going back to how it started. It's going back to reading books, being smart, shit like that, if you want to win. So part of why rap is being killed, because you know what? We don't have to dumb down Americans no more. We got Americans as dumb as we need them now. So now the smart people that are smart are going to be superior over all the idiots. All those who are smart, you're going to live a beautiful life. You're going to live, you're going to be superior. I'm telling you the truth. All the dumb people are going to suffer. The dumb people are now designed to be the pawns and the footstools of society. The dummies are designed to be the, uh, the trash, the laborers, the nothings of America now, the dumb people. The smart people are going to continue to evolve. That's why we're in a time of information. Revelation means time for information. Because when shit starts getting revealed, truth is getting revealed. Knowledge, information, the truth. So all those who want to stay in fantasy world, want to stay sleep, want to stay dumb, the world is not for you no more. So you got to go. It ain't because of me. It's because how they made it. They purposely made you dumb to get rid of your ass. Get it? You manufacture a product for failure so one day you can throw it in the trash. It's called a recall. Get it? Don't you know a lot of shit they get out? It's a recall on it. They already knew it was fucked up before they put it out there. Of course they did. That's my point. And something else you said, Shay, too. Thanks for that uh, super chat. Another thing why I co-signed Juicy J, and I told y'all on this channel, Juicy J is the only rapper that apologized for, for selling trash, meaning he is the only rapper that apologized for promoting drug use and all the shit that niggas do in his raps, and he said, I'm sorry for that shit. He the only one that said it. And that's why I respect that man, because we are grown now. You see? It, it, it would be better if a nigga that lied to me when I was a kid 
come out at least now and say, yo, bro, that was just music, man. I ain't mean that shit. I was just met, you know, we ain't know. That's what I keep telling y'all. They owe us that. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. They owe us that. Only thing they owe us is to say, yo, man, my bad. Fuck it. Because look, y'all, a lot of y'all got to a point where y'all knew y'all was feeding us trash and bullshit and brainwashing the youth. But the thing is, once y'all got rich, they just left the hood in shambles. So my point is this. See Bad Bunny? Just showing y'all. Bad Bunny is a Puerto Rican rapper and singer known as the King of Latin. <laughs> I told y'all he the biggest thing smoking. Who is the king of rap in America right now? And I dare you to make up a lie. I dare you. You ain't going to be able to say it. You ain't gonna be able to say it. You ain't gonna be able to say it. And the point is this too, y'all. We not set tripping on race, genre, none of that. We are looking at things for what it is. We do not control the industry. The industry always controlled it. It is their shit. Music is their dominion. So they have to say so what the fuck happens. So all I was trying to say is this, y'all. We love music with all our heart and soul. But the point is, Music have has always been the devil's playground. Always. That's the whole science of the pop piper. I broke all that shit down. Music is an instrument used to make human beings sin or to make human beings do whatever the fuck you want them to do. If you want to get rich off a human, you use music. You want to brainwash a human, you use music. You want a human to kill a fucking self, use music. You want a human to do drugs. Use music. If you want a human to have a lot of kids out of wedlock, use music. Simple and plain. You want somebody to blow their brains out, use music. Music is a device used by the devil. Simple and plain. Take out a fuck you want to take it. I ain't got nothing against the devil. I feel like the devil need to burn ass. That's his job. All right? Burn a boy, Nigeria. See that? This is where your hip hop is at right now for you dumb niggas that run your fucking mouth. Another thing I'm gonna show you is don't forget, these niggas know what's going on. Why you think I did the video specifically? Steve Harvey sold out. He said, Burn the boy is the hottest thing smoking in black people in America. You motherfuckers, how you gonna hate on Africa when you motherfuckers stole Africa swag? And he, what Steve Harvey was saying basically, all you niggas running around America calling yourself Africans. Wearing African garments, claiming Egypt, he really was saying, Y'all frauds. Y'all the ones jacking Africa swag. He basically was saying, Motherfucker, how you gonna hate on Africa when you niggas calling yourself Egyptologists? You ain't never even been to Egypt. You niggas over here calling yourself African Americans, nigga, you ain't even been to Africa. That's what Steve Harvey said out his own fucking mouth. Because he know the truth. <laughs> he knows the truth. They know the truth too. You don't think they know about Bad Boy? I mean, Bad Bunny and Burner Boy? They, don't, they ain't saying shit because they want features. They want to do business with them. Live Nation want to put them on tour. And I'm going to tell y'all something else. And make sure y'all holler at me when this happens. Please make sure y'all holler at me when this happens. Please. When you see Bad, Bad Bunny going to be at the Barclays, holler at me. And when you see Burner Boy, the Nigerian, going to headline at the Barclays, make sure you holler at me. Just make sure. And remember who told you first because they coming. It's going to be this year. What Watch. A lot of this shit we ain't gonna see the 2024. Everything now be getting cooked, brewed, and stored up. If they putting in, they storing all this shit up for later. And like I say, you supposed to be asleep. So really, you ain't supposed to know about none of this shit. It's just niggas like me bringing it to you. So let me ask you a question. Let me throw a couple shots at these clown ass niggas with big platforms. How many big platforms that claim they hip hop rap? I don't want to say no names because they all fucking bozos. How many of them told you about Bad Bunny and Burner Boy? How many of them told you the truth about how rap is falling in the how many how many how many bum ass rap channels you see of niggas that can brag to you how they've been on YouTube for 10 years? But why the fuck they can't tell you the state of rap right now? Why they can't show you numbers, documentation, finances, huh? Why they can't show you management, analytics? Cause they just niggas that run their fucking mouth. That's why. That's why it just hip hop niggas that gonna just talk. Told you, man, I don't need shit. I'm just gonna tell you what it is. Fuck a studio. Fuck all that shit. All right, I'm going to just tell you the truth. You want content, right? I got content for you, y'all. Holla at me. Look, 
Dominican rapper. Do you see the Dominican sexy red? She went viral for posting topless pictures on Facebook. Do you see them doing the same shit Americans doing? Now, can you see how you've been replaced around the world? Can you see how what you thought was yours is no longer yours? It got fucking buried. I told you that, man. Because while you've been asleep and you've been on nigga time, right? You ain't you don't pay attention to the world. I'm not the smartest man in the world. I just pay attention to most. That's it. Not that smart, y'all. Don't nothing just don't get past me. I understand. See, once I woke up, I understood that the world was bigger than me. Even though I was born and raised in New York, and even though I earned my bones in New York, even when I was a fucking teenager, I knew the world was bigger than me and New York. The world, motherfucker. You still hiding out blocks and neighborhoods and cities. It's about the fucking world. So the internet is how you mind travel. Or go. The internet made you can go around the world, sit in one spot. I've been through how to pimp the internet. World wide web. But y'all don't know how to work the world wide part. You just get caught up in the web. You caught up in the trap of the internet. The dumb shit. But the real people know how to work this bitch on a worldwide scale. I've been doing this shit. But see, a lot of y'all, small time. Only time you go somewhere is on vacation. You're Taurus. You know nothing. You don't know no shit. But run in your fucking mouth. All right? Let me tell you something, man. I've been a worldwide nigga. I got five different states, maybe eight different cities I can go live at right now, like the back of my hand, nigga. I can go live there right now. But you thought a nigga got to be on a run to live somewhere else. You thought a nigga got to be in trouble. No, dumb motherfucker. I've been understanding about crashes and I always understood. You got to have more than one pot. You cannot put your eggs in one basket. So when I was in certain places and I understood that this shit ain't working, I knew I had to be able to go somewhere else. You know why? Family, nigga. When you got a family, I don't know no such thing as struggle with no family, motherfucker. So if I got a family and we going through some shit here, we're going to fucking go there. You're training program to stay in one spot till you fucking die and suffer. That's idiot shit. So I'm talking this worldwide shit again, right? Internet's for the world. But you you, you came to the internet, but you still stay local on this shit. That's why a lot of you idiots, right? You from the block, and you come on the internet, you do block shit. That's why you're a blockhead. I call you a picklehead nigga. Because you know what? You don't see the big picture. So therefore, you seeing niggas come on the internet doing the same nigga shit, never seeing a big picture. So right now, as we speak, to make it short, Bad Bunny, and Burner Boy are the biggest rappers on the planet. You just don't know about it. Why? Because Americans are late now. Remember, we were the trendsetters. We were first. Little did you know, they played a game where they made America last and the stupidest. I told you, they turned Americans into the Simpsons, man. Family guy. They made us dumb, man, on purpose. How they do it? How did they do it? Well, they didn't do it till the fucking internet became what it is. They didn't do it till America started living on the apps every fucking day. And while we was living on the apps, everybody else was living in real life. And that's how they were taking over. That's what happened, man. And plus, don't get it twisted, y'all. The powers that be are behind the whole shit. The industry is behind everything. That's why I kept telling you. The rap game ain't over because I said so. It's because the industry says so. We're not giving niggas no more big budgets for that rap shit. So they can kill each other and fuck shit up. And they are too high risk insurance. They keep getting felonies. They got an entourage with them. It is not profitable no more. Fuck them. That's what they said. All right? See that? Now, let me show you. For those who are fucking dumb, Puerto Rico, top rapper. Africa, top rapper. Dominica, top rapper. Dominican. Get it? But this is not this. It's more than them than this. It's a way more than them than this. That's popping right now. But it's, it's the, the secret is, shh, we're not going to let the Americans know till we're ready to launch those tours in America. That's why we gave those dumb niggas the last American tour they're going to see. It's called a Beyonce Renaissance tour. That's the last real black American tour they're going to get. They're going to get prepped for this foreign shit. Oh, guess what? You think I'm bullshitting? Well, guess what? They're not worried about you going to the shit. What you think all the migrants going to do? All the migrants going to go see them, man. All the migrants that just came, they're going to support Burner Boy when they get their money. That's why I say it ain't about you no more, man. He is a singer and a songwriter and a record producer. He rose in 2012. He been out. He been out over 10 years. See that? They all know about him. They all know. So let's go, y'all. Let, let, let's keep it pushing. Let's keep it pushing because I'm cruising. 
Look, now let me get into the numbers. Let's get into the real shit. Analytics. U.S. Music Revenue Database. The RIAA. These are the ones that solidify all of the music. They track all the money, whether streams, sales. You might as well say this is the IRS of the music industry. You might as well say this is the feds of the industry. And this is what I was trying to tell idiots. Any lyric spit on a verse about a nigga killing, shooting, I don't give a fuck what a nigga rapped about. These are the people that record all of the information and look over it, document it. Every lyric, every bar ever dropped to man has been documented by the U.S. Music Revenue Database, a.k.a. the fucking government. It's just that dumb niggas from the hood that suck dick only affiliate the government with feds and CIA. IRS is government, dummy. Social service is government. When you go to social service, do you, anywhere you see the American seal is the government. State seal. Get it? When you see U.S., they're all the same people. CIA. It's no different from EBT, motherfucker. Where the fuck you think your money come from? The government. So you can run your mouth all you want to. That's why niggas that down... Little do you know, a lot of you sellouts are down with the government already. You got an EBT card. You with the government. And I'm saying that to say that those are the main people always going to try to go against you a lot of times. <laughs> My point is this, that the whole music industry is the government. Today is the day fantasy we're all over with. It's over with. The, R the RIAA provides the most comprehensive data on U.S. record music revenues and shipments dating all the way back to 1973. These are the ones that was tracking the music. They track, no, they, they still to this day, they're the ones that track the music. These are the ones that, that know if you're fucking lying or not. These are the ones that know if your bootlegs stealing. They've been around since 73. They've been tracking music. That's why I'm trying to tell y'all, man. Ain't no way. Let me break it down, make it real simple for y'all idiots, man. Pardon me, y'all. Remember, I got to talk to two people out here. Keep this in mind US Music Revenue Database, government. Everything they was rapping about, the government already knew that shit. That's why I kept telling y'all. You think they were just going to let Jay-Z rap about all those bricks and cocaine and all this crack so he sold? You think 50 Cent was going to tell you get rich or die trying all this street shit, talking name, dropping niggas' names in a song, and then magically uh, Supreme when them niggas get indicted by the feds and go to jail and all this shit after he done made a song called Ghetto Quran? Rap is a form of snitching without snitching all right how many people have got indicted on fucking rap songs but you no 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 diddy ain't no snitch no jay-z he ain't no snitch no fit no 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 they real niggas how they real niggas when everything they said out their fucking mouth was documented by these people right here the government nigga. What the fuck you talking about and that's just one branch they document all music word for word bar for bar and if they do not approve it, it will not touch the airwaves. You cannot get an accolade, a Grammy. You cannot get a no award, period, without the RRAA approving your shit. What does that mean? And I mean the government behind all this shit. That's why. And when the government say party over, party over. It's these people that said rap is done now. It's over. We ain't giving out shit. No more accolades. We don't want to hear it no more. Why? We only need a rap to do what it do. We need a rap to keep niggas in bondage for 30 years, mentally. We've done that already. They have nothing no more. They have no hood. They have no community. They don't get along. They hate each other. They can't party no more. They can't have cookouts no more. They have nothing. We broke them. What did it? Rap music. And grandma and them said that damn rap music was going to do it, and they wasn't lying. They said it was the TV and rap music that destroyed the black household. You can argue about that shit all you want to. I don't give a fuck. Is hip hop still relevant today? Overall, hip hop music continues to be closely connected and simultaneously relevant to activism. Hold up. To activism? The fuck you mean? Oh, hip hop is only really used for voter die campaigns. Oh, so that's why Joe said if you don't vote for me, you're not black. He had to talk to Cardi B, a rapper, because rapper or hip-hop is used for activism. 
oh, that's why everybody that's a hip hopper was down with Black Lives Matter. And if you ain't agree with it, the hip hoppers got mad at you. Because hip hop is used for activism. It has nothing to do with making money no more, fool. Hip hop music continues to be closely connected with activism. Now you see why it's all about agendas? <laughs> what other activist agenda did they push through rap recently, y'all? Zestyism, activists. What else did they push through hip hop recently? Feminists, activists, because they are actors. I already told you, dummies, that rappers are actors, but they are also activists because you have to be an activist to push agenda. What did he agenda? Nigga, get drunk. Their job is to get you to do shit. Activists, they get the niggas active. Niggas get to selling them drugs. Niggas get to shooting. Niggas get to doing what the government need them to do. We need the activists to get out here and get these niggas to move. Make them protest next week. Whatever we want you to do, we just get the rappers to tell you niggas going to do that shit anyway. That's my point, y'all. When I Remember what I told y'all? I said, look, hip-hop has been, been hijacked by the fucking politicians, man. See, what we don't understand is, y'all, our minds and hearts always put hip hop in a certain place. When we when, when the, see when we say hip hop, we understand that it's real music that happened at a real location in a real community. What I was trying to tell people, it's not about that. Once they sold hip hop out, see we're green. Once Russell Simmons and them started getting record deals. The game was already sold. So we have to keep it like this. The real hip, look, y'all, hip hop in its purest form of culture was before record deals got involved. All right? That's just being real. I'm going to be honest, y'all. The true form of hip hop is really poor. That's really it, being poor. Get it? Plugging up that sound system to some shit when you ain't got power. Get it? Finessing a goddamn them turntables, but we ain't got money for no goddamn beat machines. Get it? That's where hip hop really is. Make coming up with that shit from scratch. Get the cardboard, nigga. We got the break dancing popping off. My graffiti niggas got the background done up pretty. Nigga, we just on the hood. We in the hood, broke, but we having a good time making this shit pop. And we don't need no technology. We don't need no fucking money. That's the real hip hop, y'all. Let's stop playing. Beatboxing. Fuck that. That's hip hop, nigga. Beating on tables. It's really poor. Meaning, hip hop really in this form, it has nothing to do with money. But when money came involved, niggas needed money for turntables, studio time. That's where the politics came in at. And I told you, in the beginning, a lot of hip hoppers had to get money from white people. And a lot of beginning hip hoppers, they got money from gay white men. These are facts. I don't care what you, you ain't gonna look it up. Don't say nothing to me. Got to put in your mind, poor kids doing hip hop, want to be big one day, need help. Can't get no help from the ghetto. You got to go where the money at. The village. So I told you, man, pedophilia been going on. Pedophilia is part of hip hop. A lot of young hip hoppers were into pedophilia. All right? Because they had to go. That's why I say, when you start going and find out about hip hop, my people from New York City already know this. But we was young. We didn't know what was going on. Think back in your mind when it was breakdancing that family. When the little, little young boys is breakdancing, all young boys at this time knew you had to go to West 4th, 14th Street. You had to go to the village. And it was breakdancing in front of white men that were fond of black boys. And they would give them money and tip them. And sometimes those young boys would do strange things behind the scenes. That's what they was doing, y'all. We just was green. Because some of us were too young. We couldn't go to Manhattan. But when you were a badass kid, your parents on fucking drugs, they were going to Manhattan. They were leaving the Bronx, going to Manhattan to get money. That's what they was doing. Panhandling. But they was breakdancing and panhandling for gay men, man. That's what was going on, y'all. It was gay men. Gay white men were some of the first supporters of hip-hop. You don't got to take it out of my fucking mouth. And some of those gay men also became executives and CEOs. a and It's the truth. My point is this. Hip-hop always been under control. Once the money came involved, y'all, it was not hip hop no more. We was just holding on to the real hip hop. 
hip hop is one of the most listened to genres globally on Spotify, and more than 400 million users around the world have streamed hip hop music so far. But the point is, hip hop is streamed, but it is not making money because what 400 million people did not buy an album, they didn't buy a CD. 400 million people are not buying merchandise. Let's be honest. A lot of y'all on YouTube every day. Let's be real. But you're not going to pay for a YouTube subscription. And that's just how the world is. My point is, they already know this. They already know there's a certain demographic that are not going to spend money on certain things. This is why they're not concerned about African-American money no more. It's that simple. And also, they know that the secret is the African-American community is falling and it's about to be buried soon. So everybody is also learning how to maneuver without the black community. That's what they're doing, in my opinion. Now let's move on to something that ties into all of this. Something I already spoke about. This YouTube shit. Omni and the Hellcat is one of the reasons why I told y'all this YouTube shit coming to an end. Exactly. A, a, a matter of fact of as, you know, how we know YouTube is coming to an end. Y'all should already know this. I know y'all already see it, but I want to show y'all it is a chain of events. Why it's like this now. It is a lot of niggas that help destroy this shit. That's why I don't fucking like you niggas. Because you all do the same shit. You see one nigga make it, you want to use his formula. You see another nigga do it, you want to do the same shit. And that's why I say we in a world of clones and dick suckers. I said it. And no disrespect, I'm not talking about the rainbow community. I'm talking about men that claim straight. But somehow the men that straight suck the most cock. I don't get it. Anyway, this is a big YouTuber, but his ass in the feds now. He got five years. He got and he, he about to get he got all this shit taken. Matter of fact, if I want to go to goddamn, I can go buy one of his shits right now. If I had to brag, <laughs> we can go to this auction and buy his shit right now. And I'm only proving the point to y'all that it's the same song over and over and over again. The same shit niggas been going through from the 70s. But you thought because this 2023, this stuff is over with. Now let's get into the shit again of fame, my favorite category. Here's another famous YouTube celebrity nigga. A nigga that took a thousand selfies and kept wanting you to know how much money he got. This is the era of faking it till you make it or look at me, motherfucker. And I know for a fact, if I go live and throw my chains on, I have a lot of people on my nuts every day that I don't even like that just want to see me shine and want to say little shit like, oh, man, that shit fake. But the whole time he on my nuts. See, that's why I told y'all everything I fucking did was strategic, man. When I saw the world of niggas doing this shit, I said, I definitely ain't doing that shit for many reasons. I told you when I came in this game, I said I'm gonna do everything opposite on purpose. Niggas showing their face, I ain't showing my face. Niggas wanna brag, I ain't gonna brag. Niggas wanna be lit, I'm gonna act like a lame. I'm a nobody. Cause I wanted to prove a point that all this shit you see is fake. And the shit you see that you think is real, it's gonna hold up for a little while. But the truth is that which is fake will always perish. A lot of niggas get runs. Niggas get runs, yeah. Nigga might get a one year run, two, three year, five year run, but the real always gonna remain. I know this, so I had to watch a lot of niggas claim clout, claim big dog off the internet. And I'm not, I'm not saying he wasn't doing this thing before, or after. I'm just showing you, man. It was the shit he did got his ass in the feds. And once again, my nail in the coffin is these days are over with. It's done. Now look, cars, jewelry from YouTuber, Army and the Hellcat being auctioned off in Maryland, October 13th. Two days from now, you can go and watch his shit get auctioned off. And if your money right, you can buy his shit. What's my point? What's the point of making it rich and get all your shit taken? That's what. What's the point of being rich and you fucking brag to everybody how fucking rich you are 
<laughs> and when you bragging to everybody, your stupid ass forgot about two people you bragging to. The feds and the IRS. <laughs> That's why I say, man, I'm from a cloth. I ain't never going to be bragging. I'm never going to show off what I got. Cause we ain't from that. We from what you got. You keep low key. It's for me to know and you to find out. Now, if you see me in that Lambo, that's on you. Other than that, you ain't going to know what the fuck I got. That's what I come from. I also come from never, never incriminating yourself. To this day, I'm always tap dance on the mic. I'm never going to say certain shit because I'm trained that way. The ways of a snitch is to always run their fucking mouth and tell everything and show everything. I'm not from that era of fuck an era. I'm not from that DNA of show and tell. Never have, never will. Because I know the loudest one is always the weakest one. The one that always got to say, look at me, look at me. Now I'm talking about a ten, he's weak or got a small dick. You get it? <laughs> and I'm talking about when it comes with the ladies. Because the real, those who are solid, they ain't got to show shit. When they walk, it is told. The story is told and they walk and the talk. And when you see the real, you're going to know it. A Power Ranger rap. Stop right there. What I told you. Didn't I tell you to look at black men as boys, kids? Didn't I tell you that? No matter how much the black man get, no matter how much the black man buys, they always want to look at you as boy. He's a boy. You a boy. A Negro. That's how they look at you. That's how they look at us. Get it? So that's why it starts with that first slogan. A Power Rangers wrapped Lamborghini supercar. A Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl ring. Many other cars and pieces of jewelry are up for auction this week after they were seized from New Jersey YouTuber Omni and a Hellcat in a federal piracy investigation. Now, what you didn't hear about this story, you didn't hear him say he got five businesses confiscated. He got some land confiscated. He's a dumb, a dumb nigga from the north. He didn't get no land. All he bought was chains and cars. He acted just like a Philly nigga with money, a New York nigga, and whoever else. Whatever the fuck you want to say. He didn't get no land taken, no businesses. All the nigga bought was a bunch of cars and jewelry. And I'm going to tell you dumb motherfuckers this the last time. Because there ain't never going to be another nigga be as successful as him on YouTube ever again. No matter how many fucking cars you buy, niggas, you only could drive one at a time. No matter how many guns you got in your fucking stash, you only going to bust one accurately at a time. So when I see a nigga with a lot of cars, the shit don't impress me. Because I know one thing. Nigga, you can't drive them all at once. So eventually they become a waste of money and a waste of time. They're just going to sit. So the key is I buy shit. I show you how much shit I got, how much it's worth. You hop on my dick and then you give me more money for my fame. Haha, <laughs> niggas been playing that game on your brain for years and you fed into it because you want to be lit. You go to Beyonce ticket, not to listen to Beyonce whack ass songs. You go to Beyonce tour because it makes you feel like you're lit. I told you all this shit been a social media game. People been indulging in shit for clout. You bought the Beyonce tickets and took your picture and bought your outfit because you got clout off the shit. You wanted to let everybody know how you getting flyed and booed up and you about to go out on the town. Meanwhile, you don't give a fuck about Beyonce where she's singing. You know she ain't got no real hits since 10 years ago. You know the shit ain't really about nothing, but Beyonce's show is an event for clout chasers. Get it? Clout chasers. I'm in the Hellcat. Was a nigga that was a clout chaser that made it big and then he understands this. If I got the bag, <laughs> you gonna be all up under me trying to be like me and worshiping me. Meanwhile, I'm gonna spend circles on your ass and get your fucking money. You know what I'm saying? That's how it go. The same way niggas got on YouTube and said they were sponsor taking money for sponsoring wars. I'm gonna say it again, nigga. You ain't seen a war yet. You niggas got finessed and robbed. Only thing is, that one nigga that told you he was a big YouTuber, he wasn't as big as Hel Omni. He was trying to be like him, but he ain't big as him. And that nigga probably gonna go down too because he ain't paid he ain't paid IRS. Remember this too. You ain't a rich nigga for real if you can't pay your taxes. Because a nigga with bread gonna peel off them, he gonna peel off that million and pay them taxes, man. 
People that get real money know what time it is. They know I got to pay these taxes so I can get more money. But when you a dumb nigga, <laughs> you just brag about what you got. You show it off. And the feds watch this nigga like, okay, all right. Yeah, they, 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 they did the numbers on that truck. They see you shining, nigga. But they know one thing. You's a nigga. And they know somewhere down the line, you ain't do your fucking taxes correctly. And that's how they got his dumb ass. Plus, he's incriminated with all the pictures. Now, let's ask a question. Real simple. Omni and the Hellcat could have been a YouTuber. And he never had to show all the shit he got. That nigga still be around right now. All this shit we looking at could have been parked up in garages. Nigga, I'm a smart nigga. I'm a hustler. See, I do my shit smart. Guess what? The Lambo at one of my family members' house in a garage with a job. Nigga, I'm going to spread all these cars out of family members' houses, nigga. And my shit, I might have one foreign and a truck and a basic-ass shit. Chilling. My fly shit, you ain't going to know where that's at. Haha, <laughs> dummies. That's how I roll, like a G. You feel me? You only going to see me when I pull up. A The former YouTube star, whose real name is Bill Omar, was sentenced to five and a half years in the feds in March after pleading guilty. See that? In order to pay restitution, officials seized jewelry, cash, over 20 properties, and over 50 cars. Now, I will correct it on that. The nigga had 50 properties. I'm going to give him that. No, pardon me. He had 20 properties and 50 cars. It should have been 50 properties, nigga. But he had, he had 20 properties, so I'm going to correct myself on that. And over 50 cars. So my point is this, y'all. This nigga did not have to brag. He had so much shit. This nigga was supposed to go into hiding. I'm going to be honest. I would have said, fuck you too. I would have said, fuck that shit. You know why? I already made it. I would have got low after that. I would have got low, changed my name, started a new company, and been behind the scenes ever since. But in the world of clout, flossing, showing niggas what you got. Why is he showing niggas what he got? Because he know niggas going to be on his dick. That's why. Not females, dudes, men. And then men going to try to be like him. Then you see a phenomenon of men going live in the car. <laughs> anyway, then you see a phenomenon of niggas showing you their cars. How many pictures? Yeah, ladies, I got on y'all the other day about taking a thousand selfies. But no, I'm not going to give these bitch niggas a pass. Look how many niggas. Well, my point is looking at it now. I'm look, We looking at hindsight. When a nigga had it all. Now he got five years in the feds, don't got shit. What did taking all these selfies add up to? This is my synopsis of what I've been telling y'all for these couple of years. When I tell you that nigga ain't going nowhere. That's what I meant. Niggas going to have shit. You going to buy shit. But in reality, nigga, you're going nowhere. I told you that. Why? No matter how much you jump in and out these cars, where the fuck you going? You wish you going to ride through the hood? You're going to drive around a little bit, wave, get some clout. But at the end of the day, nigga, you ain't going nowhere. You're going back home. And what I mean not just going back home, I'm talking about in life, you ain't going nowhere. That's how America's set up. America's set up for black people to make it, start feeling themselves. And as soon as they think they did something major, they're going to always let you know, you ain't going nowhere. You ain't special. You back to square one again. You know why you ain't going nowhere? Because we ain't never changed the laws. That's why y'all ain't going nowhere. How you gonna go somewhere we ain't never changed the laws from slavery? <laughs> That's why I kept telling y'all this shit is deeper than what you think. This shit is mental. They know that. Nigga, you can buy a house. You can buy a zillion cars. But you still not going nowhere. You can take a thousand trips. Where you going? You don't even know the fuck you are. Ha <laughs> ha. They know this. That's the hidden joke. You know y'all niggas get money, but you don't know who you are. You don't know your real culture. So where you going? circles and all you're gonna do is go in circles till we take our shit back matter of fact nigga we just needed you to keep the economy going when it was slow that's why you're gonna see he bought all this shit during 2020 because america is grimy the ppp money was to keep the economy going when everybody was in the house the economy would have crashed if they did not give niggas money to keep it going how the fuck you think these cars was moving off the lot y'all if it wasn't for the PPP money, this, these cars wouldn't have sold. Taxes wouldn't have got paid. Dealers would have been in default. Businesses would have collapsed. But when, when they gave niggas that money, niggas kept the business going. And that was niggas' job. 
Niggas' job was to get these cars off the lot, keep these jewelers employed, and keep the real estate economy booming. And that's what they use niggas for. And once they use niggas up, party over. IRS, Joe Biden Task Force Committee, lock their ass up. Get their ass out of here. And that's what they did to him. He was just used to keep the economy going, y'all. That's it. Treadmill, hamster on the wheel. That's why I said you're not going nowhere. So like I said, I kept trying to break people out of flesh racism to, to get you to understand the real racism is a mental warfare. It is a spiritual warfare. So I kept trying to teach y'all. Or when I mean by teach y'all, just tell you in my opinion. Because I don't get busted inside my, my side, my head by white people. I'm not scared of white people. I look them in their fucking face. And I'm going to talk to them like I talk to y'all. But if it's some business, I'm going to use a little bit more professional words. So I know the real war. When I, I know, see, like I know when a white person getting racist with me, he's going to do some mental shit. Like I said, the real racism is simple. If you're walking behind a white person and they don't hold a door for you and they know you're right there, that's, that's a racist motherfucker. But if that white person hold that door and go out their way, they're letting you know, I'm not a racist. When you try to get an apartment and they start playing these money games with you, that's the new racism. Well, we're going to need three stubs. Are you making, get it? That's the new racism. Anyway, I just wanted to show y'all. He was a big YouTuber. Hassan Campbell was a knockoff army in the Hellcat. He was trying to be like him. He just said he didn't get that far yet. And he another one that kept trying to prove to poor people how much money he got. Why? For what? You ain't going to do shit with it. You still dumb. Can't buy a brain. Can't buy a heart. So what the fuck? Anyway, my point is, it was niggas like this and a whole bunch of people on the internet that made this thing called personal business is no longer no more. No such thing as my own business, mind your business. Now it's everybody business. For what? I don't know. But obviously, I'm starting to look at him and I can tell he probably was a nerd. He probably was a lame. I'm going to be real. And he had to create a persona for himself. So you can see right here, you like a lame ass nigga. Right here, you look like you was probably a weak ass nigga. You, I'm gonna be honest, you probably was a fat, short dick nigga. All right, you couldn't really put no work in on no girl. So you, you felt a certain way. You got money, you started creating a persona for yourself, nigga. Like a lot of you lame niggas do. You start creating personas for yourself. All right, and that's all he did. Internet games, internet troll, now the shit over with. All right. I told you they all do the same shit. The other nigga, he just did a thousand lives from the fucking couch. So I saw niggas trying to be like niggas. So when I saw niggas trying to be like niggas, I already knew all them niggas headed for failure. Because that shit is played out. And for two, you ain't going to get nowhere trying to be like another nigga. For three, man, people got real shit going on. They don't give a fuck what you got. Let me say it again. In this new world we in, people don't give a fuck if you're doing good or bad. You can tell a person, look, man, I, I'm good, man. Shit tight right now, man, bro. I'm about to get put out, man. All right. This shit fucked up, man. I can't pay my bills. Niggas gonna be like, so? Or niggas gonna say, man, that's fucked up, bro. But niggas don't care. Same way if I said, yo, bro, I just closed on the house. I'm about to move my new house next month. So some motherfuckers gonna be like, so? That shit ain't got nothing to do with me. Because we in that world now. People don't care about you, man. So I don't know why people got that in their head. I'm just the one to tell you. Get that shit out your head that people give a fuck about you because they don't. Nobody cares. You're just something to pass time by sometime. You're just something I come across when I'm scrolling. Understand that, y'all. Because we was in this world where everybody thought they were so important. You're not. You just take a lot of pictures of yourself, dummy. That's it. You do a lot of posting. But you're not going nowhere. So my proof is, let's look at this in slow motion. We're about to get out of here in a minute. I'm in the Hellcat. He had... 500 subscribers on YouTube. Over 100,000 on Instagram. 20 properties. Hella gold chains. 50 cars. Now he has Nathan. The nigga name is Nathaniel now. All right? He's in fucking jail. Which means what? He went all around to come back to square one. He started at this point and ended back up in the same point. 
It made it look like he was going around the world. It looked like he was going somewhere in life. But when it was all said and done, he's actually doing worse than before he started. Get it? That is the life of the average black man. I've told you, I've been woke up to this dumb shit a long time ago. That's why I stopped going in circles over 10 years ago, y'all. I'm just a nigga on the internet telling my truth years later. Everything I said on this internet is fucking late. Everything on this internet I said, I don't even did years ago or seen it years ago. I'm just late to put my shit on the internet because I had to let a lot of other frauds lie on this shit for years. Not just frauds, but a lot of lame niggas too. And a lot of niggas that are half-ass, I see. Anyway, man, that's my opinion. I, like I said, I'm not here for that shit today. FBI raided the home of Millionaire YouTube on Instagram. Took his Rolexes, watches, froze his bank accounts, took his streaming business, workers couldn't get paid. My point is for what? What was it all worth, y'all? Let's ask another question. If he would have been low key, behind the scenes, suit and tie action, just chilling, do you think he would be in the feds right now? When you brag, you're also mocking the feds. Why niggas don't want to get through their head to this day? The government is all on the internet. They have people, they have budgets. They have millions of hundreds. Look, they have millions of dollar budgets to pay people to watch the internet all day long. That is what the fuck they do. But somehow, dumb motherfuckers in the hood will not get through their head that the feds are always watching. Because they think the feds, just a word, the feds, the feds. They're always watching, dummy. They're probably in the chat right now. They might, they might hit the like button. Who fucking knows? That's why I don't say shit that I never can get my ass out of. I'm never going to say some shit that's bogus where I got to worry about getting jacked up by the feds. Because I know they watch my shit. They watch everybody's shit. That's what the fuck they do. But somehow, niggas in the world of fantasy, they believe in cartoon characters. See, this is what niggas... Let me tell you about niggas, see? Niggas believe in rappers, <laughs> but they don't believe in the feds. They don't believe in the government, and they don't believe that the rappers are down with the government. That's the only two things niggas will not believe. And it's usually the same niggas that, that, like I said, the niggas that don't want to grow up out the land of make-believe still don't want to understand that rappers and the government are the same people. Or should I say, rappers get to a certain level and they, and, and they have no choice but to comply with the government. That's what I'm saying. The government is always watching. That is my point. They're always watching because all of these platforms are government certified. That's how it works. It's common sense. I know that. That's why I don't overstep my boundaries. That's why I told y'all I ain't no fucking terrorist. I say that shit on the airwaves. I'm not a fucking terrorist. I'm not a cult leader. I'm not anti-government. I'm not against the flag. I'm none of that shit. I'm just a nigga that run my fucking mouth. All right? So if they listening, they go hear what the fuck I said, and then I'm going to show them. Listen to my video. Look at my transcripts. I fucking told y'all what I was. So I know what the fuck I be doing. These niggas, pfft, you should already know. They're going to tell everything on the, to the government. They're going to break down. Niggas be talking gang talk, word for word, breaking shit down, talking about niggas why they still doing bids in the feds, all type of shit. And you clown niggas listen to that shit, talking about you real niggas, that real nigga. A real nigga is a dick sucker now. Let's say that. The new word for real niggas is dick sucker. I said it. All right? That's the new word. Are you a real nigga? Oh, that means you a dick sucker. All right? I said it. I make up my own shit on here. You a real nigga? That really means you a dick sucker. All right? That's my opinion. So let's move on, man. YG baby mama involved in a fatal car crash. His baby mother killed an 89-year-old woman. I said, wow. But then I also thought, what is an 89-year-old woman doing still driving? Because she could have killed her. And that is a problem, too. Well, a lot of older people, they don't want to stop driving, y'all. They the ones do a lot of these accidents and killing people, too. And you know the old person kill you in a car... They ain't really going to get in no trouble like that. But that is a problem. But in this situation, YG's baby mother killed the woman. And don't forget, Brandy did that shit too. Y'all don't forget Brandy, Ray J, you know, <laughs> y'all know Ray J's sister, Brandy got a body. Brandy done killed somebody. Don't forget that. You know what I'm saying? 
We are told not the other woman was driving a 1985 Cadillac. I said, Dad, what the old lady was doing? That old lady was driving her original caddy, y'all. It might have been a classic, but I was just like, damn, what's she doing with a caddy on the road? See, look, she was driving an 85 Cadillac and made a U-turn, and old girl, Caitlin, struck the woman's driver's side door. The 89-year-old was pronounced dead at the scene. Now, look, y'all. Do you know how hard she had to hit that lady for her to die from a door hit? People that know about which y'all know what I'm talking about. For her to hit that lady on the side of her door and kill her, you know she had to hit that side door super hard. That lady dead, man. That's why G baby mother, man, she got a body, y'all. Now, this is the closer. And I ain't going to say much. Y'all know what's going on right now in the world. You know I ain't speaking on that because that ain't none of my business. It ain't about shit. That ain't nothing but to get you worked up and to get the small hat people worked up. Especially in New York City, boy. Them small hat people on edge right now. But I want y'all to look at this and study this very closely to get it through your fucking head today, y'all. Today is the day we close this shit. Look at Floyd Mayweather. What's his name? His name Floyd Money Mayweather, right? What did Floyd Mayweather do, y'all? Floyd Mayweather sending private jet to you know where to deliver supplies. I want y'all to swallow this for a minute. What's wrong with this picture, y'all? And I ain't talking about that flag. Can you now see the truth? Can you see the truth? How these niggas know the truth, but they ain't gonna do shit for you? How many times I came on the platform and said, look, man, nobody gonna save you, man. Nobody gonna save us. I said, they all turned their back. I said, do you think we are the only people that see the hood being destroyed, the community being destroyed, no more money, no more finances? When I kept saying it's over for us, y'all, it was because I understood that Joe Biden was not going to cater and pander to African-Americans this term. I also knew he was not going to drop no finances. He was not going to sponsor no programs to help us. But everybody on this internet that had a big voice did not say shit. They did not tell you. That means either they was fucking dumb or they was with the program. Because I was not going to watch a so-called group of people get wiped off the face of the earth because that is what is happening. But you will see the same nigga you praised and sucked him off. You paid for them pay-per-view fights. You kept talking Floyd Mayweather, man. Floyd, Floyd. Man, I'm telling you, man, Floyd, he undefeated, man. Ask any nigga in the hood about Floyd. You can't say nothing bad about Floyd around no black nigga from the hood. They love that nigga. But you're going to see in a crisis. We're in a crisis right here in America. Floyd gave money to Israel. He didn't give you nothing. Nothing at all. So what you got to say now, niggas? Can you see how in the last day everybody turned their back on you? Hopefully, I got it to your fucking head today. Let's go back to Juicy J on the recap. Juicy J is the only one that is a rich individual. He's fucking rich. CEO, producer, rapper. He is the only one saying hip-hop is dying. It's about to die. What are we going to do about it? But he's really also saying the black community is dying. What are we going to do about it? Because remember, all these coded words is why you fucked up. When they say hip-hop, rap, Black, urban, it's the same shit. If hip-hop is your culture, for those who don't know, culture means way of life. So they told us the way of life of black people is hip-hop. Well, if black people's way of life is dying, that means black people dying. Duh. But shit is coded. And you don't understand codes. You don't understand matrix. You a nigga that takes shit on face value. You hear a word, you react off the first thing you hear. You're a dumb nigga. You don't understand the pyramid got four sides to it. You just see one side. So your one-sided ass has become obsolete. You, ain't, you don't get what I'm talking about. But the real understand that when Juicy J said what he said, that, uh, that is an outcry. And my point is, why is he the only one speaking the truth on what is going down in this crash of the black community and our genres of music, which is our money makers. Juicy J understand that black men have become billionaires, or should I say millionaires, 
off of rap music the past 30 years. And he knows now that the rap game is about to die, that means a lot of black families are going to suffer because a lot of rap niggas are rappers. A lot of rap niggas are, you know what I'm saying? They have started families and created revenue off of this shit. When I told you, when I showed y'all how Meek Mill sold his house in Atlanta, these are signs of what they're doing. But before I showed you the rappers selling their shit, I showed you the rich actors selling their shit first. And I told you, when you see the rich, the white doing shit, that lets you know what's going down. I know the signals, the flags. So then we started watching the white actors cash out, right? The white celebrities. Then what happened? We started seeing the black rappers do shit. It's the OnlyFans acting like they ain't broke. Trying to lie to you. They broke. That's why they on OnlyFans. Nobody woke up one day and said, I'm gonna know I want to do OnlyFans. No, you woke up one day and said you want to be a rapper. But when that rap shit ain't work, then you woke up and said, I'm gonna do OnlyFans. Because that rap money ain't popping. It's called prostitution, man. <laughs> But they all know the truth. Juicy J know the same exact thing. Diddy, Jay-Z, all of them know the same shit. It's just that nobody's going to say nothing. Because they don't their nigga on this stage care about black people. But one thing every nigga on this stage know, black people get you rich. Who watched Power? Who the main ones watch that shit? Even though Power, Raising Canaan, BMF, it's all the same shit. <laughs> all he do is change the actors and the names. Same shit. But who watches it? Who bought all that Ciroc? Who bought all those Yeezys? Black get you rich. All of these niggas understood the art of how to monopolize the hood, how to get money from the white man, and they also understood the art of making a promise to the white man that he can, that they can double their assets. In every last one of them niggas you see on that stage, prove to the white man he could triple and double their money. Every last one of them. That's why they in power. And you was taught to suck their dick your whole life and sold a dream that one day you're going to be like them. And fuck all y'all who think like that. I said it. When I'm done, I'm about to get out of here. Sorry to anybody I disrespected because all the people that love me, I love y'all back. Anybody else, I don't care about none of y'all. And I said it out of my mouth. All right? Only real supporters, real subscribers, right? I told you the war is real against the fake, and, I'm, and I, I want war with you fake niggas. You fake people, I want war. That's that simple, all right? I ain't worried about racism. I'm worried about fake motherfuckers, because I don't like y'all. I'm going to leave it at that. What's up, Shireen? Pardon me, y'all. Episode 561, I'm done. So I'm not beating no more dead horses no more, all right? I might give little updates, but my point is proved. I'm still in the deal with this. What's up, Melanie? Fat Joe represented Puerto Rico for clout. He pimped that shit convenient. You don't see him talking about that 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 that, that Latin stuff no more because he's a bitch. That's why. They pimped the Latin community. When I say, I be talking about all of us for real. I just got to use these dumb terms. They made up these labels, man. Shit. You feel me? Nigga, when I go, I mean, let, me, let, me, let me break down how I roll. Like, when I go to the gas station, you see the Indian man working there. Me and him cool. When I say, what's up, bro? He be like, what's up, brother? We cool. I'm cool with foreigners, man. I'm cool with everybody, but I don't tolerate disrespect. I don't tolerate that slick shit. I don't tolerate that slick racism, that slick shit. Like niggas ain't shit. I don't play none of that. But when it comes to people, I deal with all people. I'm cool with Ak. I see Aki. What's up, Aki? I see that I'm cool with the a -Rab. I got, I'm talking about, I got my personal individual. We cool. When he see me, know me, we chop, we chop it up. Yo, man, what you think about that? I talk to people, man. I talk to all people. That's how I told y'all I do investigate. I, I might holler to our kid at the gas station. Yo, man, that gas looking crazy, man. He like, no, man, I know, man. No, no, no. We talk. I talk to people, man. That's New York shit. I'm worldwide, man. I deal with all races, all people, all countries, all creeds, man. I relate with everybody. I'm not a dumb nigga. I can relate with a person from the South, West Coast, Arabia. Alhamdulillah, Bismillah Rahim. I can relate with a, a, a person from Asia. I'm well diverse. So that's why you can't talk to me any kind of way. You got to have smarts. I got a lot of street smarts, a lot of common sense smarts, a lot of book smarts, all of that. Why? Because I knew that was my survival. That's why. That's the only reason why, y'all. I knew being dumb, I was going to die a long time ago. That's it. I ain't fucking special, but I ain't here to play neither. Episode 561. Now, I'm telling you, man, my people, I fucking love y'all, man. I know who my people are. So that's why I really do this for. 
That is my conscience. Other than that, I don't care about shit. And I ain't never been scared to die. These sissy boys, they scared. That's why they just talk and run their fucking mouth. They gonna do shit. What's up, y'all? Be teller. Rap TV, Islam Reese interview. Yeah, man. I gotta be real, man. The nation of Islam ain't doing nothing but talking evil. I've been there already, y'all. I was dealing with that when I was in my 20s, y'all. That's why I'm saying I could I could talk about Islam. I dealt with that. I was heavy, I was a heavy Islamic fanatic through the age of 17, 18, 19, 21, 22. Get it? So you I smoke any nigga talking about Islam to me. I know all about Islam. So when I talk about Islamic fools that are frauds, I know what the hell I'm talking about. I'm telling you what it is. All right, let, 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 let me go back to these Islamic frauds. You can't claim Islam and drink liquor. You cannot claim Islam and steam blunts to your face. Sir, shit, Islam, you just don't do. Out of respect for the religion and the culture. When you deal with Islam, you don't start beef with your brothers. You don't start war. You don't be reckless. You don't be fucking making excuses. You don't do goofy shit and apologize the next day. When you're a Muslim, every fucking thing you do is upright. Everything you do is upright from your talk, your eat, your walk, how you deal with people. That's a real Muslim. Salute to the real Muslims. I told you these niggas are frauds. But I do know a lot of pussy niggas be Muslim. A lot of faggots become Muslim. I said it. I'm talking about dudes that claim to be straight. They be turning, they the ones that turn Muslim. A lot of dudes go to jail, they be sissies and they become Muslim. And they, and they wear their little dresses and do their little salat because they already was getting on their knees before that. All right? A man that was accustomed to getting on his knees, maybe he get locked up, he might turn Muslim faster. Maybe. I don't know. No disrespect, disclaimer, fair use. I'll be done with this shit for real, y'all. I'll be doing this shit, but I'm really, I really be done with this shit. I ain't going to keep biting my tongue, man. I'm done with all this shit. You feel me? On that note, I'm about to get out of here before I fuck up this shit. Salute. Salute, yay. Yeah. Jackie. What's the word? Devin. Yeah, man, I ain't got time for that shit. For real, y'all. I only do it for my people. I'm telling you, man, a lot of people I just don't like. I don't like that fake shit getting out of here. You ain't gonna be around me. I'm banging on that fake shit to the end. And I'm making friends with the migrants. I told y'all that, man. I'm cool, God, man. I'm telling you, man. My, my new friends are going to be immigrants, nigga. I ain't fuck with none of you niggas. You know why? The last day, I wasn't solid. And the last day, I fucking folded. Y'all fucking went against the grain. All you, most of you niggas went against the grain. Why? You was wrapped up in all this internet shit. A lot of you niggas. Any nigga was wrapped up in this internet shit, you a joke to me. I'm never taking you niggas serious. You got wrapped up in the internet shit. All right? I'm on this shit every day just like everybody else. But you ain't never gonna see me clown. You ain't never gonna see me be no fucking clown. That's what you niggas did. That's why you ain't gonna get nowhere. A lot of you niggas ain't used to shit anyway. That's why when you get shit, you don't know how to act. I don't need no bum ass nigga that moved out the project to sit in the backyard and tell me I'm trying to inspire you. No, you trying to inspire other dirty niggas. Get it? Clown that. Y'all bought that shit. That's why I be mad. Y'all bought clown shit and was indulging and loving it. Now y'all see that shit over with, right? <laughs> now what niggas niggas so lame you got niggas so lame <laughs> they got lazy with trolling before y'all was trolling a nigga when he stopped y'all stopped trolling but look all the time that got wasted that's my point so if a rich nigga of you two fell what the fuck you think gonna happen to everybody else let's start counting shit I know my day gonna be one day <laughs> But see, I'm real to tell y'all. I'm real. I'm going to tell you straight up. Look, I'm done with this shit. Don't get no more memberships because I'm about to dead this shit. And then I'm going to go ham on this bitch so hard, I'm going to try to get this shit shut down. That's what I'm going to do when I'm done with it. I'm not going to tell y'all what I tell y'all. So you just remember what I said. Remember what I said. I don't get fired, nigga. I quit. And I quit on my terms. And when I quit, I'm going to do some shit to get fired. Get it? That's how I move. So... That's why I tell you, I come. I don't take this shit for granted. I come on here to do what I do, and I'm gone. I live in the real world, nigga. I live in the real world. When I'm on this internet, I'm talking to the world, the other world. You get it? The worldwide shit. But in the real, when I move, I don't think about none of this shit. I don't think about. Pfft. Just let y'all know the truth, man. What's up, Rondell? What's up, One Track Record? 
What's up, Ty 105? That's right. I'm going to tell y'all when I'm done with it. All I want people to understand, man, stop trying to make everybody the same. Niggas been doing that for a long time, trying to make everybody the same. Always trying to figure somebody out like everybody's a fucking bozo, everybody's a clown. But deal with a clown in your fucking face, you don't see that. But you always trying to find a nigga be telling the truth or whatever. They always trying to find flaws in niggas. My point is this. No matter how many flaws y'all found, no matter how many niggas y'all exposed, no matter how many niggas y'all beef with, how much money did it put in your pocket? How did your fucking life change? Huh? That's the whole key. Now, if you clown and getting paid, nigga, I, nigga salute. You put a nigga's card exposing shit, getting rich. I, nigga, salute. Niggas was doing shit for free. Ain't getting nowhere. Nowhere. And I'm talking about niggas that got numbers. Niggas got numbers. Trying to convince everybody else that they was hot and they not. Because the truth out the bag, nigga, shit getting revealed. Man, let me start dissing some of you niggas because I'm bored. Fuck that shit. I don't give a fuck. All right. Half these niggas be on the internet, right? Niggas bums, for one. They jury game sucks. How the fuck you claim New York? Your fucking jury game is fucking... Oh, my God. Jewelry game off brand, dress off brand. These niggas be wearing discounted fittings, crunchy fittings. Niggas wear fake glasses, fake ass clothes. Sit up on a computer every day talking about I run shit. Man, fuck this internet shit, girl. How many times I gotta say it? I'm gonna keep shitting on what you love. I'm gonna shit on what you love because I know it hurts. That's why I do the shit. Just because. Whether I'm sometimes I say shit, I don't even mean. I just say it to hurt niggas' feelings because I know it hurt. Get it? So what's the joke about? The thing is, man, let this shit be what it is. It's just entertainment. Niggas need to stop taking shit so serious. Because if a rich motherfucker got rich on this shit, and he don't got nothing no more, that should tell us. Look, no matter what we do, y'all, we ain't going to get rich off this shit. No matter who we hate on, it ain't going to help us, y'all. Can we at least figure that out by now? Reason why I say that, because half you niggas ain't got no fucking content. You ain't got shit. That's part of why this shit about to die. It's going to die because... There is nothing to watch. It is very simple. I don't want to watch a nigga diss another, another broke nigga. Broke niggas go live to diss other broke niggas. Or niggas with money go live to diss niggas that don't got money. Either way, niggas dissing each other, but it's not going to profit. But well, you should be dissing these rich niggas. Dummy, you're supposed to diss the rich niggas. All right? Not Juicy J, but the other rich niggas. But you ain't going to diss these rich niggas because you like sucking their penis. You're going to diss the rich niggas, dummy. That's where the money at. Ha <laughs> ha, you don't get paid. Of course your channel gonna flop. You're dissing broke people. How your channel gonna grow, dummy? Your whole channel has broke content. So you're gonna be broke. That's why a lot of y'all gonna fall. Simple. A lot of you only go live for cash apps and super chats. And you don't get that. So my point is, y'all, is it worth it? What is it all worth? What? I'll let you tell it. I'm out. Episode 561, I'm done. Holler at y'all later, man. Y'all enjoy y'all day. For those who offended by me screaming, I'm sorry. I'm out. This your fucking hero. This is New York hip hop. Why the fuck New York ain't gonna claim that? This New York hip hop right now. Don't get mad at me, motherfucker. This New York, you looking at New York hip hop right now. So stop playing with me, man.
That's my whole point, Inca Baby. The only hit you're going to ever tell me about Nas is, oh, shit, that's why I keep telling y'all, hip-hop has already been made. Any banger you tell me is going to be old, bro. That's the real hip-hop. That's my point. But we can't keep giving Nas excuses for what he's doing now. That's what we've been doing, man. We keep giving them excuses for now. You can't. You don't want to shit on Nas because of them classics. I know, bro. But we got to keep it real. Illmatic was bangers, but that ain't Nas no more. He will never make another lost tape. You get it? That's my point, bro. We got to put shit where it is in perspective. See, when we got to refer to Nas, that means we're back in time again. That's my point, bro. You feel me, Inka? Whoever. I don't know if you're a woman or a man, but my point is this. Every time we got to refer to their old shit, that is our proof they don't have nothing new. They didn't further the culture. So all we could do is talk about the old shit. That's my point. When we talking about Jay-Z, the love niggas have for Jay-Z is still the love that we have for reasonable doubt. You get it? Hard Not Life Volume 1. Hard Not Life Volume 2. That's the standard we still hold Jay-Z in them too. But that was 20 years ago, family. That's why. But that's all I'm trying to tell people. We holding them at a, at a we hold them to a standard of some shit they already did 20 years ago, and you'll see the past 20 years they did not do shit. But we do have our little favorites sprinkled around, but they didn't do shit. All they did was be gatekeepers, y'all. It's the truth. It's out the bag now. Or put it like this: these niggas have held back more talent than they have helped. That is a fact. It's a fact. Once again, thanks. <laughs>